Hello and welcome to the finals of the IFSC Boulder World Cup in Salt Lake City. This is the second of our back-to-back -back World Cup weekends. Pete Woods here with Megan Martin. We had 20 semi-finalists this morning. We got down to six in a tough semi-final round. Megan, let's have a look at some of the highlights from our semi-final round and find out how we got from 20 of the best down to six of the best. And it was such a difficult semi-final round there we have Maximilian Milne in his very first semi-final absolutely crushing the boulders as Kokoro Fuji at the very last minute on this boulder was able to get a top which put him into the final and knocked out Manu Kornu. Mm -hmm. So that we had uh, Yoshiyugi Ogata who has been in I mean 35 plus events over here and making that knee bar on boulder one look really really good to get his ticket in there. And then Zach Gala, young American, climbed really, really well in front of the home crowd to qualify in third place. And with Zach is another teammate of his, Sean Bailey. This is his second final in his career. His first one was in Vail a few years ago. And he ended up in second place there, so I'm sure he'll be gunning for a podium spot here. But really great climbing from Sean Bailey, looking very strong and technically sound today in the semifinal as Tomoe Narasaki was in great form today. It was nice to see him. It's his first Bouldering World Cup of the season, mm -hmm. so nice to see him back and <laughs> showing no signs of slowing down, that's for sure. No, and there's a man with 19 podiums to his credit at only 24 years of age. Really, really great climbing to see him back. We had on Nat Natalia Grossman on the left-hand side, topping that first boulder, climbing very, very well, uh, following up her performance last weekend. Uh, where uh, I'm sure she's looking to climb just as well as she did then. And on the right, you see Yanya Gonbrett 
trying to figure out men, women's number three, which was a little tricky as Stasha Gayo seeing her back in a final since not being able to compete in 2019 and only having one shot to make an Olympic team at European Continentals as Brooke Rabatou quickly find, or barely figuring out the beta for women's number three and putting her in the final. Just a really nice piece of climbing right at the end of that time frame as well. And then young Oriane Berton from France, 16-year-old sensation, who's uh, back in the finals again after a wonderful performance last weekend here in Salt Lake City. Uh, super, super excited young phenom. And Miho Nanaka, looking very strong here on the, the second boulder from the round and just showing you that composure that comes from such a successful career and she is always psyched to be in a final and then i would say the story of the weekend yanya garnbrett is back she is back and she is looking to find her way to a podium climb very well in the semis did not top all four bowlers which is very rare so i'm sure she'll be a, a, even more informed tonight mm -hmm. being even more present and we're excited to see what she brings for us. Yeah, as I'm sure she is excited to come and throw down in the finals for the first time in a little while. So a quick look at the crowd here. We have a Salt crowd. Salt Lake City, we have a crowd. The sun is out and beaming down there. I mean, it is a, there's a lot of people here in Salt Lake City and it brings up the ambiance in the venue. An outdoor venue can feel a bit empty, but here it feels very, very full. A quick look at our calendar. So we are here on the second of back-to-back -back weekends. We had speed go down on Friday and we're into our Boulder final. A quick look at the rest of the schedule across the season. We're hoping to get as much of this season in. Remember the Olympics drops in here as well. Really excited to see a full World Cup schedule. Hoping to see a lot of these athletes out there at all of them and except for obviously some of the Olympic qualified athletes. We might not see them as much mm. but it'll be great to see so many athletes testing themselves in Boulder speed and lead. And our first Boulder lead World Cup in Innsbruck. That's never happened before, mm -hmm. so that'll be really exciting. That's exciting. There are quite a few firsts uh, jumping around this year for sure. And we are just about ready to go. So finals, if you watch the semifinal, if you're not super, super familiar, finals is going to look a lot different than the semifinal. Finals is all of the athletes, as we see Maximilian <laughs> out pumping the crowd up, all of the climbers in, will climb each boulder one after another. So they're all gonna do boulder number one, then they're all gonna do boulder number two, and then three, and then four. We're gonna watch the men climb first, a quick transition, and then the women will climb when they're finished. The difference here in this round is that they have previewed the boulders. So they have gone around as a group, uh, not that long ago, 15 minutes ago, they get two minutes to look at each boulder, work out their sequencing, and now they come back and climb. Yep, exactly. And one other difference, if you haven't watched a climbing competition before or you didn't join us in the semifinals, is that there's only four minutes to do these boulders. And part of that reason is because they get that preview time, they don't necessarily need the full five minutes to attack a boulder. Exactly. And they will come out, in the, as always, in the reverse order that they qualified. So we'll go from sixth place up to first place. It's also interesting to note that the climbers are together. So they're, after their preview, they're not in isolation from each other. They don't see each other climb the boulders, but they are behind the wall. They can hear the crowd. You have a little bit of that knowledge of you know, how long it took for that climber before the crowd erupted or before they come back behind the wall. So they all sit together in isolation. They climb the boulders, and then they rejoin each other in a secondary isolation. So the climber that just finished a boulder doesn't go back to the climbers that haven't climbed it yet, but they do join the other climbers that have sent the boulders. So you have this so slow building knowledge of how the other athletes are doing and often they do know what it takes uh, as you come down to the third and fourth boulder if they have the ability to, to top a boulder. Yeah, and having a crowd makes it easier to kind of try to decide whether or not someone did something out in front of the wall because in the other events this year we haven't had a crowd so it, was e it wasn't as easy to be like, oh, did, did someone get zoned? Did they top a boulder? You have no idea, but when a crowd erupts with roars of excitement, you generally think, oh, such and such might have talked to Boulder. Something <laughs> exciting has happened. So we have uh, four brand new boulders. If you're not super familiar, they reset new boulder problems on every single round. So 
we've come through a whole round of qualification. And this is a good look at the athletes and their time observing the boulders. So they're allowed to touch the start holds. You'll see them grab it. That's useful information that shaves a few seconds off the, the time you need to start and think about a boulder. You watch some of them mime it out, they'll talk to each other, especially the teammates. Yeah, oftentimes teammates will communicate with, with each other. And then you will also see athletes from different countries, especially if they've trained together in the past, they will maybe try to sequence together as well. And it, it might seem silly to you all at home to actually touch those start holds, but when you walk up to the wall and can feel the start hold, you can start to get a sense of in what position you want your body before you pull onto the ground. And in this sport, attempts, you don't want to give attempts away, especially when establishing on a problem. So it's important to kind of have a better idea of what you're going to do before, before you actually go out there. Yeah, and it also, uh, time is one of the other components that you need to keep in mind when you're climbing in a finals. You want to make sure you're making the best use of your time. So the least amount of time you can spend thinking about the start of a boulder, the farther ahead you're going to be when it, times to, when it comes time to pull on. So here's a look at your start list. We're going to go from the top, one to six, Natalia Grossman, Stasha Geo, Brooke Rabitou, Orian Berton, Miho Nanaka, and Yanya Garnbrett. It's, uh, it's, every final is a, is a stacked field, and this one is no exception. And for the men, first out will be Maximilian Milne, Kokoro Fuji, then Yoshiyuki Ogata, Zach Gala, Sean Bailey, and then Tomoe Narasaki will come out last on each boulder because he is qualified in that number one spot. And again, for the men, a very stacked field. It's really cool to see just the level of climbing continue to get like more and more difficult each time every Every year the fields get deeper and deeper and it gets more and more difficult to be consistent in these competitions. So it's so cool to see talented everyone's become. And we have some potential for some firsts. Zach, you know, has never podiumed in a final and, and Max has never podiumed in a final. So we have this a few st undercurrent stories running through both sides of the field. Is that there are some people running through their first major World Cup season and they are uh, getting a feel for what it's like to step out to your first finals boulder problem and I uh, I don't care how many youth competitions you've done Megan <laughs> your first open world cup is an open world cup final it's a big deal I mean obviously if you can get a world youth world championship title under your belt that's great but there is nothing like being in an open world cup and getting in a final and ending up on a podium right out the gate Maximilian showing the power that needs to be there to attack this this three paddle move I was talking to one of the root setters earlier, and he, he described it as one, two, three, four, five, throw the foot. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe not as easy as we'll just see. one, two, three. We'll see. <laughs> Count with us as he comes through. Max, this kind of boulder, it tests your coordination. It tests your ability to have your brain do a couple things at once, and it absolutely steals attempts. Uh, this is something that gets in your head. You try a boulder. You, you want to be conservative, but on a boulder like this, it doesn't take any power. So you kind of, you try it and you try it and you try it and you try it. And you need to learn the movement, so you need a few attempts, but you have to be careful not to let it get in your cycle. Yeah, with the learned movement, it takes a different kind of power, right? That rather than just have pure like, grappling, fighting power, it's more of a cardio power. And you get tired in a different manner, but it is a type of movement that you can just repeat more and more. And with that attempt, Maximilian just solved a little bit of the puzzle. He still definitely needs to generate a bit more if he's going to continue to move, but he's got the right idea. And what is tricky about this start, too, is to generate off of that right volume, one of the starting footholds, it can be slippery. So it's kind of a fine line of how much pressure and how much power to put on it before without your foot slipping. Yeah, it's possible to push too hard, exactly. which seems like it wouldn't be a thing, but it is. So that's Closer. Closer. And just have a look. Look on the bottom of your screen. You're going to see this graphic come up. The bars represent the four boulder problems. Uh, the bar that's highlighted is the boulder problem rounds one. Men's boulder problem number one. Number of attempts matters. So we're counting attempts. Half a bar shows up when they get to the zone hold, and that's this, the hold marked in the middle ish of the boulder to be in pink tape and let's say zone. And then a full bar when they top the boulder. And it's important to have a look at those attempts. That is what's going to split climbers out. You top two or three boulders each, it's going to matter how many tries it took you to get there. So have a look at that. And then, and 
getting a little bit closer, just sort of inching towards. That would be the zone hold in this case. You earn the zone on most boulders, <laughs> uh, and it's uh, it's something that it, it will matter. Tops are king. We want to get tops. The person with the most tops and the least number of tries will win the event. If push comes to shove, we need to look at zones to see what happens if two people top the same number of boulders in the same number of tries. We're going to have trouble with it. How many zones they match? Uh, well, actually, <laughs> that, I said that <laughs> is, it's the tops and then the zones. zones. It, it, it did used to be tops and attempts, but now it's tops. And then if two people at the same top, we'd go to see how many zones they have and then how many attempts to tops, how many attempts to zones. And that's a quick look at that paddle. And what he is doing is so great. He just needs to generate a little, a little bit more. more. And you see him swinging each time a little. Ooh, a little dry fire there, a little though. Bit, yeah. It's funny, too, because as you're paddling, what's interesting about that paddle movement is you can't just paddle. You have to do like a pull up and then continue paddling sideways, not forward. <laughs> yeah, a little sideways. bit up and a little yeah. bit sideways. Yeah. But it's, it's, you do have to have a pull up motion, but not too much pull up because you don't want to stop your momentum fully, right? Right, you don't want, you're not aiming to stop on each one, catch a swing back and forth, and then generate it. I mean, you could, but uh, the angles of these holds, they're not very really good. You need to generate enough to keep moving. It's, it is very difficult. Time is going to run out on Maximilian here. A strong effort up really against a hard boulder. I mean, the way he came out, how powerful and confident he was, was totally awesome. He just didn't find that right speed and right amount of power that was necessary to continuously propel him to that last handhold. So we'll have to see if Kokoro can figure that out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, that's a good look at 85 overall competitions uh, through his career, and that's across all disciplines. Uh, he is a very Seven gold medals. Seven gold medals. This is a climber who knows how to get into finals and then <laughs> put the work in. And they often think that you just have to, it doesn't matter if you come into finals in sixth or in first, you still have to climb the finals boulder. So you punch your ticket in, and then you're faced with the same boulders as everybody else, and the clock resets essentially at zero. It's great having each round start over. You get to fight for your position in each round. On his first attempt, he kind of looked like he smeared on the wall a little bit too much. It kind of slowed down his momentum. Did it again that time. So let's see if he can maybe get more upper body momentum and kind of limit that lower body a bit more. He needs more of like a swing with his lower body to keep telling To keep to moving right. through. Yeah, it's almost... I mean, the swing is the perfect description. You want to be able to get that momentum and then just let it slide through. You have to be strong enough in your core in a move like this that you're not dangling, uh, but you have to let it come through enough to not stop. And this is, we could probably spend an hour talking <laughs> about the complexity of boulders like this in which you have multiple movements before you really get to put your feet back on it. The, the, Moving in two different planes, upwards and sideways, this wall uh, has a bit of a kickback. So it angles uh, less than vertical at the start and then immediately tips back to greater than vertical right where that seam is just above the start hold. So it does change the angles of travel. One thing that's interesting that Kokoro is doing as well is he is placing his right foot kind of in the just above the middle of the volume and then his left foot at the very top, when I think he'd be better off kind of just throwing his right foot higher. That's what Maximilian was doing. And it looked like it gave him more generation to the right. Whereas when Kokoro, Kokoro does it this way, he kind of ends up more vertical as he's hitting the paddle. Let's see if he changes it all. See, the, it's kind of keeping him back a little bit. He's almost too vertical. I wonder if he can adjust that and throw that right foot higher and not do that double step at the bottom. I think it's slowing him down. Yeah, I think it, it feels to him like he's getting more time spent moving in that direction, a few more running steps, but more power and, and less tiptoes. Yeah, his trajectory ends up a little off this way. He's not falling as much, and it just kind of stops him on that middle hold. Mm -hmm. yeah. Finals and World Cup climbers in general are used to this kind of problem. It'll show up in various forms in various competitions, but there's always going to be a subtlety somewhere that Ooh. means that 
you can train all you like for this type of movement, but as soon as you add in these feet <laughs> on this angle, it, it's a brand Different. new movement every <laughs> single time. So that the point that Megan brought up earlier about needing to learn movement in, the, in a short amount of time, if you had a, a day, <laughs> they would send this bowler. About four minutes is really Not a, a short amount of time. Two tries ago, he tried to just stop on that first hold, mm -hmm. which almost looked like it could work. Uh, but then he kind of just flew off of it. But I wish he would adjust his feet a bit. Oh. Oh. So he did manage to slow it down. And does he have time? I think he does. It's a clever footwork to finish here. Very nice. Well done by Koko Fuji. What was so interesting about that is I kept saying he's landing so vertical, right, with that little foot placement. But this time he kind of, instead of trying to continue it, he was like, you know what? I'm not. I'm gonna stop on the I'm second gonna stop one. I'm gonna stop right here. Because he was slow enough to be able to stop, and that made all the difference. So nice adjustment there by Kokoro Fuji. Really, See right really here, good he luck. just kind of one, slow. two, and then just stop. Not even really try. Wow, actually in the slow mo, it looks like he didn't really stop. But when it was in a faster pace, he really like paused for paused. a long time. Yes. Wow, that's really really good work. And. Uh, and what's, what's really great about the climbing he did here at the end specifically is he has such good mobility and hip flexibility to be confident enough to move over quickly and be able to get his foot high enough on that last hold in order to be comfortable to press into the top with just a few seconds to go. Like so confident in that part of his skill set. Nice Yoshi first go. Yeah, good <laughs> first go from Yoshiyuki Ogata. And you, you will see different, if we see more than one climber get up to that finish, you will see different choices in the footwork to get established into that uh, position in order to hold. There are no holds on the <laughs> final hold. It's, you need yep. to be solid in your feet and then press up into it, similar to the women's boulder from the semifinal round, if you were watching, that uh, only saw a couple of tops where you need to get really comfortable if you're going to just press yep. above your head. And Yoshiyuki's footwork on this opening move is, well, it was the same on this <laughs> previous try yeah. to Kokoro's, but that time it was the same as Maximilian's beta. So. A single hop. It's interesting. <laughs> Just when I was going to say he did it <laughs> again, he did a different beta. The best part about uh, climbing competitions is that the climbers are wholly unpredictable. Oh, yeah. You can get a pretty good idea of what athletes are going to do, and then they'll surprise you from one attempt to another, from one climber to the next. So there is a, there is a process when you are competing and standing in front of a finals boulder. Yes, you've talked about it with your teammate. Uh, you've worked out some sequence. But when you're standing on the mat, it's just you on the boulder. And you have to decide if you have a couple of options in front of you, you're the one that has to decide, do I need to stay with option A and try harder, or do I need to try something different? So there's always those decisions to be made. And you can see that now he's back to original foot placement. So you have to have really, really, really confident decision-making abilities to, for both, to move away and to stick with. Exactly, it's all about weighing your options appropriately. And it's easier said than done, that's for sure. Yeah, absolutely. One thing that would also be helpful that Kokoro did as well, when he hit that second volume hold, he kind of wrapped with his left hand on top. And if Yoshiyuki can get in a position like that as well, it should make it a little easier to continue to that third paddle. Or that third hold that's part of the paddle. Yep, he yes. oh, had the wrap that time. Mm -hmm. Super close. Now he's got the feeling. Yeah, he's got he's, he's got close now. He's touched the zone hold. He thinks, all right, I can get there now. A minute <laughs> and a half uh, on a boulder like this is enough time, I think. Oh, uh, for sure. We saw Kokodo <laughs> did it with maybe 30 seconds on the clock when he pulled on. So lots of time. Slows Stop. down. Oh, the wrap was even better that time. Yep. <laughs> so he was kind of wrapping his left hand around that second volume. That's a fun climbing term if you are not as familiar with climbing and just think about he's wrapping his hand around it, kind of like cupping it in a sense. Yeah, he's sort of pinky towards the wall yep. and trying to get around on top. There's, there's so many different ways to approach every hold. This is... Oh, uh, he didn't bring the left hand in that time, he thought. He's looking for that foot. Yeah. You see his right foot is thinking that he'll be able to stop his momentum with that stab. 
Uh, and now we go to this moment. Does he go back to foot first, or does he try to slow down with both hands on the second of these three? A little bit of both. Shalugi, 10 attempts. Probably not taking its toll physically, <laughs> but we start to get a bit panicked here. Oh. It's he needs to bring that left hand in. I think you're right. He has to throw the foot. He's right. He's right. He's just he's throwing it a little too early. Kind of jumped the gun there. But he knows how important he almost gave away an attempt yep. there by not establishing for a second. Oh, no. so, so close. close. He's going to keep going. Yoshiyuki, he knows the zone is important. This is how you know the zone yeah. is so important. Not able to make it happen, but he gave it all he has. And that, I mean, you love to see that out of a competitor trying to the bitter end. Really great attempts. He got close multiple times, just not able to fully keep it together. That, that, that was a probably great, the closest. great attempt. It's always frustrating when you're, you know you're right there. Ugh, just and couldn't hold that tension. And just needed to make a decision there. And I, as you said, I, I can't remember the last time I saw a climber try a boulder six times in 10 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> That's really fast. Here's our first look at Zach Gala from the USA. The crowd absolutely excited to see a U.S. climber in the finals, and lucky for them, there's two in the men's finals and two in the women's finals. We haven't seen that since 2009. <laughs> yeah, it's been a while. Just a little bit too excited. He kind of jumped the gun there on his foot placement, had the right momentum, but wasn't as um, present with the actual placement of his feet and kind of slipped. Let's see if he can. Ooh, nice. Much better on that momentum. And Zach Gala is an extremely strong, talented climber here from the USA. Been in multiple bouldering nationals finals. Hasn't ever, this is his first time really putting it together in a World Cup event, but he's always been capable, so it's nice to see him have that moment click. Yeah, he's been on the tour before. He's, he's climbed in all disciplines in 2019. He did put a full season in, but his best result was maybe it was uh, 27th, so. It, it was, and that, season as well he did get a chance to try to qualify for the Olympics and he ended up second at Pan Am so he just missed just out missed. which was definitely devastating for him so I know he's happy to be in this final here tonight and ready to show everybody what he's made of exactly the hometown crowd is something not to be discounted this crowd has been great they've been cheering for everyone yes but they do get a little <laughs> bit louder when the USA jerseys come out as you say we're gonna have a few opportunities uh, with a couple of Americans in each round coming up this afternoon. So Zach learning the move. He's, he's definitely moving both hands very quickly. So a little bit of a contrast from Yoshiyugi, who was leaving his left hand behind and, and coming through a little bit slower with that second paddle through. Zach's going one, two, one, two on each of the first two. And he seems to be sticking with it. And that was the intended beta, I think, or way in which one would want to try to do the climb but I think he's not getting high enough on the hold like he's still kind of hanging a little low he needs to be able to engage with his shoulders a bit more that was much better mm -hmm. and he got more momentum gonna ask for a brush there which I actually was gonna mention that during Yoshiyuki's four minutes he might might have wanted to ask for mm -hmm. a brush because I felt like it was getting a little grimy up there yeah it starts to make a difference the 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 chalk build up there's a couple things that go in play and we, you know, chucking, uh, brushing chalk off holds slows you down a little bit, allows you to stop and process the boulder, and it takes the chalk off, which, although some people will tell you, great effort, uh, that it's <laughs> mental, like, oh, I brushed the chalk off and then I sent it. You know, when you're talking about this kind of margin of error, having the hold as clean as you can get it will make a difference. Most definitely, and on that last attempt, you saw him nodding at the boulder a little. He's like, oh, I feel it. I think we'll see him hopefully get to that zone this time. And now, I think he's got to start thinking about what happens with that right foot. Yeah, it doesn't seem like he's kind of noticed that part of the method yet, but we'll see if he can put it together. It's still a little bit two to the left, honestly. He's not finding that like swinging motion between each hold mm. so much. But, I mean, there's so much power. So much power. <laughs> that looks much better. Again, a strong effort, and you 
you you can feel the progression. Oh yeah. And you just you will the climbers. Just if you can get your right hand moving just a little bit quicker, maybe you'll stick this one this in ten seconds. Running out of time to get to this zone. Oh, really close, but not going to be able to make it happen. Great effort by Zach Gala. It's just a tough, tough learned move there. Mm -hmm. There's uh, so many moving parts. He definitely has the height here in terms of explosiveness from his legs. And on this attempt too, like he was in a better shoulder position, but his hips are just propelling him out from the wall and he kind of never figured out that throwing that foot would be helpful. And yeah, his trajectory is just a little off. It's a little out instead of more sideways, hips closer to the wall. But all in all, great first effort. Yeah, 100%. Next, we're going to have Sean Bailey, second of our two American climbers on the men's side of the final. Sean has had quite a bit of uh, more experience on the lead side of things, but in the last couple of seasons has really dialed in his bouldering success. Yeah, he's always been a very talented boulder too, boulder or two, but yes, especially on the World Cup circuit, hadn't put it together so many times, but that that silver medal in Vail was mm -hmm. definitely a great confidence booster for him to, I mean, he always knew he was capable, but there's something about having it all actually come together that really solidifies that you can do this. So I think that really helped just make him a little more consistent in general, and I mean, he makes more semifinals now than he had prior. So it's nice to see him getting into that flow. Yeah, absolutely. And that, that confidence comes from lots of different places. And you get lot, you can get confidence working with your coaches and working and training at home. But when you manage to put it together, when it matters in competition, and it's one of the, the, the things about climbing competitions versus climbing in a session in your home gym is just watch Sean's next attempt here. I'm a little closer to that middle hold. Uh, competitions have the element of you must do it now. Mm -hmm. So we alluded to earlier that given an entire day, all of these climbers would work this boulder out in a session and be <laughs> successful on it. But you need to be able to stand in front of a boulder and put everything else out of your mind and say that today, right now, in these four minutes, I'm going to be the best version of myself. And that's, uh, it's a tall order. It's a tall order and you know, lots of team... Oh, Sean much Bailey, better much, on much one. better. On that middle one, he actually caught a little, like a little dip in the momentum that kind of um, propelled him up a bit more to get to the zone with the one hand and put him in a better position to actually secure it, maybe on a attempt or two. We'll mm -hmm. see what happens, but definitely found that nice momentum. It was like a nice level of it. Yeah, it, because it's possible to go too fast. It can be really difficult to slow yourself back down again. So it's the balance of momentum is uh, it's after you've gone too far and then you've come too short. You get into the... Kind just of slipped, slipped there. It's definitely pl plenty of time left for him to get back to that position he was in in that previous try. It's also, I feel like that's so common too right after you have a try that was so good and you're like, oh, I finally felt it to have a little slip because you're honestly overexcited to mm -hmm. get back to that position. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's kind of what just happened there. Yeah, I just want to go and repeat it as, as quickly as possible. Yes. Well, just a little out on that second one. It was almost like he held the first hold a little too long. Again, even though it is a learned movement, it's one of those learned movements that's a little more difficult to kind of remember exactly what you did. Ooh, yes. nice hold there. Wonderful. Really pausing, completely stopping. Just so he held his foot out to create yes. a little stall in the momentum. That was ingenious. Great mobility. That's the final nice body position right. There. That is fantastic top. That is going to be really, really important uh, right off the bat. Sean Bailey wakes this crowd up <laughs> with a top of Boulder 1 in the last 30 seconds. So watch here in the that middle right of the leg. tree holds and the right leg. He just kind of pops it out and then uses the left leg on the wall to kind of hold him in as well. Real, really nice 
adaptation there. Uh, and then it's not over here. You do have to be careful. <laughs> yeah, don't rush it. Don't rush the finish. Trust how flexible your hips are as well. <laughs> That's really, really good timing from Sean Bailey. So that leaves us with Tomoa Narasaki out for our first look in the finals from the perennial podium athlete <laughs> from Japan. 24 years old, um, 40 Boulder competitions over his career, uh, and an incredible success rate, 19 times on the podium. It's... I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it's just so <laughs> it's incredible remarkable. that you can even say those words. But, I mean, when you watch him climb, you, you see, wow, trying to skip. He was going to skip it. He, you know, when it comes to these kind of movements, too, I feel like he does some surprising things every now and then in terms of really kind of breaking the beta or the intended sequence that the root setters actually have. And he's just so powerful, he can make it happen. So it's cool to see when he does that kind of stuff, but it looks like he's going to fall back and maybe use that middle hole. I almost wonder if he was just measuring it. Yeah, just to see. Just to see where it was and, and how much momentum he could get off the first paddle. Because yep. as soon as he looked on the ground, he did the one, two, three, four. Yep. He did mime it with his hands. So it's, uh, without asking, you're all, we're, we're guessing at what's in his head. Uh, yep. But when you're this successful, you're making adjustments and you are, you are, you know, this is unlikely to be a flashed boulder, especially by five other climbers. You know you've got a couple of attempts to burn, so why not just find out how much power you can generate off the start of it and then dial back from it. And he's also noticed that every other man has taken the full four minutes mm -hmm. to be out in front of the crowd before they come back into isolation. So through some good critical thinking he <laughs> pretty much knows this boulder hasn't been flashed so why not throw something a little different on your first attempt just to see why yep. not a little too it almost looked like a little too fast there like kind of too high again there's that little swing motion that you kind of want to get that we've seen both um, Kokoro and Sean Bailey find nicely and I mean Yoshiyuki was so close to finding that mm -hmm. Perfect a, a couple of attempts away from, yeah. from putting that one down. Maybe just like one more minute. <laughs> yeah, just, just give me one more. Oh, kind of trying to slow it down. And it does seem like slowing it down in that middle section is ideal if you can. If you can. And that's where that a little bit of that extra hand strength, the ability to these holds, we call them open-handed holds. So you, there's nothing to, to wrap your fingers around and grab. It, it's, it's like grabbing a, a sloping edge. <laughs> And you need to be able to hold that hand shape. And not everybody can slow down dynamic momentum uh, on holds like this. But when you can, you need to be able to apply it. And uh, this would be the time for Tomo Narasaki to take his. Oh, kind of just slipped on that. He was trying to regrip, and he just kind of slipped for a second. A minute and a bit. Time ticks by fairly quickly. Trying to stop on the first one. And at this point now, too, he's getting down to a minute. And through some reasonable deduction, he knows that the boulder has been done, probably, from the crowd. And he didn't want to get down to a minute. So he's getting a little more frantic at this point. Yep. He hasn't been taking as much time in between. And when you top as many boulders as he tops through rounds, uh, you, you can get into a little bit of a, an expectation trap. Something to be wary of is don't expect to do all the boulders. That was as close as he's been. Still just a little too fast. And he's not really even trying to swing the foot right now either at the end of that. So let's see if he makes a good adjustment there. Almost. Definitely a little frustrated at this point as he's trying to stall on that second volume hold. Oh. <sighs> Very close. And Doesn't uh, look like he's going to have enough time. Yeah. Have to move on to the next one and try to forget about that boulder. Yeah, you need to take your confidence into the next three boulders. So this would be a frustration for him, but uh, you got to expect that there will be boulders in the final round that you're not going to top. And uh, you... Just because you topped one doesn't mean you're going to top two, three, and four. And that's just the nature of the game. And his experience will tell him that, of course, a couple of you've heard the crowd, a couple of the climbers probably topped it, but uh, that doesn't mean they're going to top the rest in the round. So as it stands right now, uh, Sean Bailey ahead of Kokoro Fuji based on attempts to the top. So seven versus nine, and then uh, three, four, five, and six are going to walk away without a zone. 
So it stays fairly even at that point with uh, the lack of zone connection. And that this is the kind of boulder where once you've got the zone... You're likely going to finish it unless you run out of time or unless something untoward. silly <laughs> silly happens, a little slip, maybe not being present enough. But definitely a boulder where it's just that first section that is the crux or most difficult part of the boulder. Maximilian Milne is going to start brushing the holds on his second boulder. Now this one, far more technical. We're, we went really fast on the first boulder for the men. Now we're going to kind of slow it down mm -hmm. into more of a technical footwork intensive boulder. With the, oh, and the cross here is quite difficult. That hold specifically has the tiniest bit of friction on it. Now, that toe hook is a nice way to get into it, but kind of tricky to get out of holding that tension without barn dooring. Possible, but Possible, a little tricky. But difficult. It's worth noting you can see the top of the red hold reflecting the light <laughs> of day. Uh, that's dual textured holes, we call that. So that is shiny, shiny, shiny on top. The texture is underneath, and what that does is it protects the hold from being used as a good foothold later in, in the boulder, and it makes it a little bit difficult. In this instance, your fingers are you know, forced into this crimp that they've put on the underside, so you're, you, you can force your choices as Max gets through the start. Nicely done that time, much, really controlling much better. that toe hook release, holding that tension nicely. Now this is where the boulder will start to pick up a big jump into a screw-on hold on a volume with another screw-on on top and then blocked by another hold, so you have to be precise, have to have a lot of power in the legs, and then hold on to a small, small crimp, hold that swing. It's, it's asking a lot There's a lot the going on. It is, you're right. It is asking a lot. <laughs> That's a foothold for later in, or actually, we're going to have to... I'm they gonna might, need a they might further need apart it. look from that. Yeah, they might need that um, to to sort of to think set about. about set before the jump, set up for the jump. Maximilian taking a quick breather, also choosing to take off his chalk bag. Which so you'll see athletes take their chalk bags on and off. Sometimes when there's a jump, athletes will take their chalk bags off. But just because there's a jump doesn't mean they will because maybe sometimes they need it later For on later. in the boulder. I've always noticed that the women tend to climb with the chalk bag more often than the men. Like men do as well, but you'll see more of the women keep that chalk bag on. Mexico trying to winding up without using. That's a good, that's a good hop. You got Very close. Good hop. The accuracy required is going to be the difference maker here. Quick look at that zone hold. The brushers, there are brushers out there that can assist the athletes in brushing, and the athletes are also allowed to brush with the designated brush and brushes, sorry. <laughs> on the mats, they cannot use their own brushes, their own personal brushes, but the designated brushes on the mats, if they want to, they can brush. Also, Maximilian's right hand heavily taped up. Here we're gonna get a good look at the hole that they're trying to go to. So this is what we're aiming for, is uh, about, uh, about half the width of your fingertip. Close on that one. Very close. Uh, but the accuracy is getting it in between, in the slot between the, what we call that a guarded hold, where the root setters are forced the climbers to be accurate by having them get in that space between the crimp you're aiming for. And that top hold is interesting too because it is shiny like a lot of those dual textured holds except it has only the shiny texture so it's a single textured hold and it's only slippery. And it's only bad. <laughs> yeah. So that's a fun little uh, gift at the end of the boulder for the top hold. Yeah, this boulder is so much closer. A lot closer. Also throwing the thumb underneath is really smart as you see people with, the people the in the crowd <laughs> noticing as well. A great way to add some opposition <laughs> once you do stick that hold. You know she's saying to her neighbor, I would have just thrown my thumb under there. <laughs> Get me up on this finals boulder oh, right here. Oh man. <laughs> so a, a strong effort from Maximilian. That boulder is going to turn away a, a few of these finalists, no doubt. Um, they, got, they got met with a coordination punch in the face, and now they're getting met with an accurate, dynamic one punch in the nose. One-handed. <laughs> Test your finger strength and your shoulder strength and your like one-arm ability. Yeah. <laughs> the root setters we'll see across these four boulders, and then you want to go backwards through the semifinal and through the qualifiers. The root setters are aiming to test 
climbers and ask a lot of them over the entirety of a competition weekend. So they're putting boulders in front of them and saying, are you capable of doing this? Do you want to do this? Are you capable of doing this? And do you want this bad <laughs> enough? So sometimes uh, it's, it's the question of... Kokoro Fuji choosing not to do that toe hook, which actually to me looked a lot better because I mean, he didn't have to worry about that release tension. He just kind of fell into the position. So close, great first attempt for him. Should be able to find that body position well. He has great contact strength, great body control one-arm power so all those things that I mean, you're needed that you here need to do this boulder so having that first attempt look like that is a very good sign for him now, this is one of those boulders where you could jump too far yes. and if you generate too much momentum and you can't control the swing that pendulum effect as you grab this a great look at this hold as you grab that hold as your body your lower body starts to swing away it gets harder and harder and harder that's uh, that's how small <laughs> the hold they're looking at is the binoculars are required. Um, but that pendulum out becomes part of the intricacy of sticking a hold of it. So you have to jump with just enough energy to get there and not so much that you uh, you swing around like a helicopter. Uh, helicopter in the breeze. And I also wonder if he can like bring his left hand in to steady him in any way. We'll have to see. But I, it looks like he's more so trying to just catch the one hand. It would be hard on that volume, but... You never know. Sometimes people, it's so crazy in competitions, especially with all the adrenaline. The way people save movements at times, it's incredible. So it's hard to say if it wouldn't work because we could see it. Yeah, well, you could absolutely see it at the you know, as a last second stabilization catch and be making the difference. And you're, you're talking about very, very, very finite differences between falling off and staying on. Sometimes all it takes is a palm against the wall. Exactly. We've seen that so many times, so I know I wonder if that could be the way. I just really like the way he's starting this boulder, yeah. though. It looks so much better than that toe hook method, just because it's such a hard release to kind of add some extra difficulty in getting a little slip there. It slipped that. It's also worth pointing out, and this is just, I mean, Bruce Setters know who they're looking at. You can see there as he's brushing it that it's a triangle. He's not jumping off of a flat surface. Yep. He's jumping off of the wrong side <laughs> of a triangle. The triangle is essentially upside down to how you and I in the climbing gym would prefer <laughs> to step on a triangle. So the point is at the top, which means you're trying to generate momentum off of a si more sideways facing hole than you yeah. would rather. It just adds to the complexity. If it wasn't hard enough, they've just made the foot really awkward. Yeah, the orientation of that volume is not in the most efficient way. Yeah. Almost brought that left hand in too. It's almost like it's going to be a balance, counterbalance there, just having your hand up there with you. It's getting so close each time, Kokoro. Not surprising because this is definitely a movement he excels at. It's really going to be a very difficult boulder in the men's round. And he is one of the taller He's yeah. the tallest final, so he's going to be the closest when he extends out. <laughs> Tried to go two hands, not a bad idea. <laughs> and he, he smiled there. I mean, I think that's a smile of, wow, this boulder really is hard. <laughs> I'm trying as hard as I can. What do, you, what do you want me to do more than this? But he's going to give us one more attempt. Not going to be able to make it happen. Great effort there from Koko Fuji as some of his Japanese teammates cheer him on in the crowd probably talking about how difficult this boulder is. Yeah. He was so close. So close. That swing, too, it's, there's not really a great place for your foot to go. That's when you can maybe try to throw your toe into that tiny little foothold that can only fit the toe of your shoe. Exactly. In. And you see as he was catching that, it's not just straight out from the wall, it's a rotation. Because you're going from slightly left to slightly right, you need to control that angle in your shoulder as well. So the shoulder stability and strength uh, is unquestioned in these climbers, and yet we're still able to test it on a boulder like this. Good save there. Very, good, very good save. Quick slip there at the beginning. Kind of a little overexcited to start moving through the boulder. Wouldn't you no? be? Well, <laughs> wouldn't you be excited to start this boulder? This one I might be a little worried about, but also choosing a much different method than we've seen so far. Be yep. surprised if it works, but he's just definitely trying to make it work at this point. I've seen most of the men palm down on that volume to then go again with their left hand 
to the zone hold, but he chose to step through on it with his foot to the volume first, kind of putting him in a trapped position. Yeah, and that's one of those things you assume that they talked about it, and when he pulled on, it must have just made sense for him to give that a try once. Yeah. And here he is. Doing the <laughs> Into the <laughs> approved <laughs> start method. It's a little foot slip there. A little close up on that volume again. Not a lot of places to stand comfortably on it. It's got a, it's on a strange angle and just becoming more and more slippery. Also the fact that you have to palm it first, so placing chuck on the volume and then come back later and jump off of it with your foot is not in the situation. Oh, a devious little trick at the start of this boulder. Gonna have to explode and Yoshiyuki does have a lot of explosive power, so let's see if he can get high enough. It's pretty good. Touching the hold, so see if you can just reel it in, get a little bit higher, activate the shoulders. You see on the bottom corner of your screen there, nothing on boulder number one, and then a, a zone half bar here on boulder number two. And three attempts. Having trouble getting back to that position. Another look at the crowd. Definitely sunny here today in Salt Lake City. Yes. What's interesting too here is that foot he's standing on is not great, and it's kind of hard. Like he's fallen a few times getting to that zone because his foot has popped off. He's generating. Oh, he, I feel like he's close. Yeah, he went over it that time. He was. Yep. Uh, he didn't get in between the uh, the two crimps that are put together there, but did try and wrap the whole thing. Dual textured, of course, on top, as the story of the weekend has been, how good is your footwork? <laughs> and can you manage uh, to hold with dual texture? Half, half two-handed. And yes, getting closer. A minute and a bit. Getting down into two tries, maybe three. I feel like he can do this bottom section pretty quickly. So as long as he can move efficiently. He should be able to have a few more tries on this. Oh, so much. Every time he's closer and closer and I think he can definitely fit those two hands on that hold. Even if he doesn't end up grabbing with the left hand fully, he should be able to get like a portion of the left side of the hold with his left hand enough to hold him in. I mean, these the fingers the finger strength these men have is insane. Yes. So he doesn't necessarily need to have full purchase on that hold with both hands. Well, just sort of a, just let me touch it long enough <laughs> to figure out how to close my hand on it. That's, I think as close as he's going to get. Definitely looks like the best attempt. Yeah. Kind of a, a look at the fingertips. Why did you let me down? Or maybe how much skin have I got left? And. You know, knowing what the next two boulders are, you might have to save your skin. Another quick look at the explosive power from Yoshiyuki, but just not enough purchase on that hold. That blocked hold on top really making it difficult. A nice close up with it. How terrible that yeah. foot is to jump That's off so of. so bad. To not slip off of that is a lot harder than you think. <laughs> so the boulders testing the men here as we would expect. Don't come into a finals round. It's important not to expect uh, the boulders to be set with the intention that the best climber will top all four or that all boulders expect to be topped. The, you can have a, a boulder that no one tops, and the root setters will be absolutely fine with that. So the, the boulders are here as a unit of four to test the finalists. Remember that. Oh, nice. Oh, hook there by Zach Gallup. So that was a smart way to get up into that red hole, which honestly isn't going to help him explode so much. But it was a good thing to try and nice, nice, to more secure body position moving around on the volume. He does, I think he's better off exploding from both hands on the volume versus kind of halfway standing up on that red hold. But still, a nice, nice use of his footwork to make sure. I mean, especially on your first attempt, you're trying to stay as secure as possible because you don't want to give away attempts. No. So it's good to find those kind of things early on, even if it's not something he uses later. It's a smart tactic in terms of being efficient. 
Yeah. Yeah. So it's just okay to feel good yeah. as you walk across the border and you put yourself at ease. Just say, I'm not going to slip here, I'm not going to slip there. Let's see if he goes with that other method. Yep, going to try to explode from here now. He does have a lot of power. I can see this being a move he would really like. So close. Definitely something that he should be psyched about because this is a move that was kind of made for him. <laughs> yeah, you, you have that feeling when you, and when they preview the boulder, he would be thinking, when I get to boulder number two, I'm going to get to use some of that pop. Um, that's, that's as close as everybody that we've seen get around on close enough to this hole to make it look like they might stick it. He, he was definitely in the right area. Just needs to figure out how he's going to control that swing. He can maybe even turn down the power. Yeah. Oh, little slip. Look at the, they always look down at the foothold like they've been disrespected. They look down <laughs> and they're what if, really? I just stood on you. you. 30 <laughs> seconds ago I stood on you and you, you were fine and now you're going to do me wrong. Uh, and that's... It's, it's universal. Commerce look at their fingers, they look at the hole, sometimes they look at the brush. There's there's lots of uh, there's lots of blame to go around. When they go back and sit down, they obviously know that uh, it's not the hole's fault, but it's uh, it's a mental step of, wow, that, that hole is not treating me very well. Zach getting some support from the crowd. You'd never guess it, but he did have labrum surgery <laughs> not too long ago. So the fact that he's able to Get out. And I, I think it was on his right shoulder. It could have been his left. I'm having trouble remembering which shoulder it was exactly. But it's crazy to think that you would have had any type of corrective surgery this within year. <laughs> this year and be standing in a, in a World Cup final. So um, that's uh, a tip it is of the his, hat. It is his right shoulder, mainly because I'm thinking back to team trials where I remember Boulder in the final and thinking like, oh, that would have been so scary for Zach's shoulder. <laughs> Worth noting, just put together 25 seconds to go. Oh, so close, holding it for just a couple seconds, but not long enough. Just gonna get one more, one more try here. 15 seconds. We can hear the crowd picking up in the background. Zach Gala just rushing in and slipping. A little slipping. exhausted, but yeah. really great effort from Zach Gala. So close to sticking that hole. Definitely the closest we've seen so far. That is one heck of a difficult boulder you see he gets it perfectly throws that thumb underneath the volume as to create some opposition trying to hold that swing in but it's just not going to be enough nope. now that's going to bring up sean bailey we'll see what he can do. i was going to mention it's worth uh you may be wondering where adam onger went so last year's oh, last year last <laughs> weekend's and last year last weekend's winner adam onger um posted uh, just yesterday that he made a last minute decision to uh, step out of this competition. He had felt a little bit of a tweak in his shoulder and, and focused on uh, Olympic performance, made the, I assure you, difficult decision to yeah. not compete in Boulder this weekend. Yeah, he's got a bigger picture to look at. He said that in his interview last weekend, if he joined us for that competition last weekend in Salt Lake City. so. I would say it's a smart decision yeah. for Adam, and we wish him a speedy recovery and hope to see him back out here soon. Absolutely. Some dancing from the crowd. Everyone's getting psyched to see some boulders go down. Sean Bailey on his first attempt, kind of slipping a little early, needs to just get a feel for these opening moves. He is a very technical climber, so has great footwork, so he should be able to figure it out. Looks like he's in a much better position this attempt and actually what's funny is I was thinking back to the Vail World Cup where he did in 2018 where he ended up silver and there was a move like this but one hand catch kind of move and he is actually so good at this kind of movement he can he can hang from almost anything uh, so it'll mostly be about generating here for Sean because uh, he is Fingers of steel. <laughs> yeah, if he, if he gets his mitts on it, it's unlikely yeah. that he's going to let go. Yeah. All of the climbers in the final are going to get the zone here, so that's essentially academic at this point. It's going to come down to the first Sean. Can he do it? Can he be the first to stick this nasty little crimp move? He's taking a good amount of rest which is really smart, especially 
though there is because there's a breeze, it's nice, but it is getting a little warmer, so just to even keep the skin nice and dry as you're kind of having to hang on to the cold a little longer down here, you want to have enough. Oh, that was it. He's getting so close. Hopefully, his skin is okay. I mean, these climbers have, this is their third round of climbing over the last two days, and for some of them, they did speed on Friday as well, so skin does become a factor. And as you can see the crowd, there is a lot of sun. Luckily, the climbing wall has a nice pavilion above it, which creates some shade and a little bit of a breeze. But it's definitely not, not as cool as it was last weekend in Salt Lake. It, it, we, we were shivering last yeah, weekend. Yeah, it, it was chilly when, uh, when you were in the shade, and the climbers liked it uh, because the heat does generate just that little bit extra sweat, a little bit extra moisture. It gets harder and harder and harder to hang on. Skin is a factor. You are not allowed to bleed on boulders in a round. So if you are bleeding actively, the clock doesn't stop for you. You have to stop the bleeding yourself before, and you need to get checked by the judge before they allow you back on. So you'll see, I saw Maximilian, there was a good shot as you wrapped the start of this boulder. He had tape on two fingertips, probably for bleeding, and that makes it hard to understand where the friction points are, especially on moves like this. So, skin, blood, tape, all of these things just layer on top of three rounds of climbing, heat, pressure, stress, difficulty. We put competition climbers <laughs> through the ringer over the weekend. So true. So, so true. And they still come up swinging. They do. And they come back for the next one. Sean, after that couple of good attempts, struggling really to get back into the starting position. Oh. And my scoring, it looks like they gave him. He got it early. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Duh, the zone's down low. Yeah, you, say, you have to remember yeah, that the zone is down low. The zone's down low because that other move looks like the move, right? Yeah. <laughs> the one you, need to, you would want to earn. Which that's even an interesting thing to talk about in general because the placement of the zone can really change things, right? Mm -hmm. There are so many times where people get through a hard section and maybe the zone is later, but they can't get to the zone or the zone's so low and they get the same score as people who didn't even get close to the next section of the boulder, so maybe the zone was too low in some situations. I do think it's appropriately placed here, but it's funny that we're so focused on the next move. On the next move, yeah. <laughs> I kind of forgot where the You're, zone was oh, for wait. a second. <laughs> the zone is almost <laughs> academic on this boulder, but still, it's you could it's slip on the start. And most of the men aren't actually getting there on their first try. Tomoa just did, but the other men, it took them a couple tries, most of them. Interesting. Is he thinking to go more static? Interesting. I mean, he sure. still was still was in a really good position, but yeah, the way he got there, maybe not the most ideal. But again, Tomoa has done so many, so many different things in competitions where you would have thought, ugh, that that could not be could the way. Not and be and the he way. just makes it happen. So it's really hard to tell because with a climber of his caliber and his skill set in general, he can do a lot of things that doesn't seem possible for most of the climbers. Quick look there on the bottom of your screen. Sean Bailey with the top of the zone, a quick look at Fuji with the top of the zone, and then uh, three, four, five, six, all with just half bars indicating zones. Oh, that is smart, that palm press. Trying to press with his palm on the slippery part of that hold, but in that position, any kind of opposition would be helpful. So really a good good sequencing there. Yeah, an interesting approach uh, from Tomoa. And it's always important to remember when, you, when you're watching the different climbers approach the same movement, is that they all have a base level of the same amount of finger strength and core strength and explosivity, but they all have something that they know they're a little bit better at, and they will create movement that will lean, sort of force a boulder closer to their style. So they'll take advantage of the things they know they do really, really well. And you're getting a little bit of that from Tomoa. Again, we've seen so many of the men slip there. That, that foothold is kind of grimy. It's a little, it's I mean, gross. it's, it's gross. gross. The angle's not great. You're having, to, well, actually, he's not touching it as much as some of 
the other men were, but um, still pausing on it for a second. And you're adding chalk to it each time. It's not like you can rush while you're on the no. wall. The movements are far too difficult for that. So <laughs> let's see if we can put it into effect here. Oh, it looks so much better. But in reality, almost like it's pulling him to the, to the right a little too much. Even if he does stick the palm, his momentum is moving so quickly to the right. It might not be enough opposition in order to hold that swing. I almost want to see them get a shade higher, just so there's room uh, to absorb the shock of sticking that crimp. It doesn't end up in your fingers. So your shoulder and your elbow first. That time he flipped his hand, too, to make it a little bit of a different uh, opposition there on the red hold, but again, it still didn't look like it was going to be the best way to do it. Uh. And interestingly, out of you know, those six tries, he never took one where he dropped both hands down no. on the large triangle. He elected to stay in that red, and I wonder if now it's in his head a little bit. Uh, he knows that, and they will have maybe talked about it, Sean Bailey's still on top here, in the top of two zones, and Kokoro Fuji with the top of two zones. And now you have Tomoa, Zach, Maximilian, and Yoshiyugi with one zone each. So, it is... Separation this is getting interesting. There is separation. It's really good here on those between those first two, and now we're getting to a spot where the bottom four are very, very similar. <laughs> it's about to get spicy, but the thing with two boulders to go, you could flip this whole table. Oh, yeah. There's definitely time. And again, since the men had a preview, they know what's coming up next. Maybe they went through the preview and thought, oh, those first two boulders, they are not my style, and hopefully I do okay on them, but I'm psyched for the last two. That's the benefit of getting to preview. Yeah. <laughs> and then, unfortunately, the worst case scenario is I can't wait for the first two boulders. They're totally my style. <laughs> I did not do them. Right. And now I have two boulders left that are a walking nightmare. So that is something that you need to manage. Just having a quick look. Uh, the Roosters are preparing for the women's final by taking off a couple of the holds from the men's boulders we've already done. Uh, there's no concern. They're not fixing a mistake over there. That was just them getting prepared for the what needs to be a very quick changeover between the men's final and the women's final round. Which, uh, you know, if you just joined us, you're uh, you tuned into the final here in Salt Lake City of the second of our back-to-back -back World Cup weekends. We are on boulder number three on the men's field, just about to get started. Following that, we will move right into the women's final. So a very short break between the men and the women. So we have finals will run essentially back to back. Quick look at the start of men's number three. We went from a pretty dynamic boulder. Now this is gonna be probably the most technical boulder in the round. Very slow moving, lots of footwork, pressing, small holds, bad feet. We saw some of the root setters trying to work through that middle section to get to the zone earlier, and it looked very difficult. Lots of opportunities to kind of fall out from the wall and just trying to find the balance points that are necessary on this boulder are going to be difficult. And then this finish hold, it's only good on the far left side. It's blocked completely on that first half. So you're really going to have to get far to the left in order to make it happen. So it's kind of a really tricky finish as well. So I'm excited to see how the men deal with what's before them here. Yeah, the technical boulders, everybody has a favorite style. Some climbers are really, really good on slab, less than vertical climbing. Some climbers are very, very good on steep, powerful, squeezy, grabby, compression type boulders. But you have to be proficient across all styles to be this successful. So all they might not like it, but they will all put something down worthy of a finals performance. Uh, they might be hating it the whole way, but technical climbing is slow, careful, it steals time, uh, you get on your feet. So this is going to be an interesting boulder. As you say, I'm very interested as well to see what happens in this boulder. It's almost impossible to tell where people are going to break down and come off because there's so many places where it looks insecure. It's a very insecure boulder, and a oh man looking at Maximilian's hand so taped oh up goodness. makes me feel for him. Yeah, on both hands. Luckily, this move is mostly your thumbs, <laughs> <laughs> and that's working in his favor. 
shallow pocket. Really nice hip flexibility that he has though. So this section could be maybe less difficult. That when it comes to this kind of an angle, flexibility will always serve you well. Mm. Kind of misreading that, trying to go straight to the zone, but you're gonna have to put your foot onto that screw on, which he was trying to do at first and then kind of bailed, thinking, oh, maybe I can just reach the zone, mm. but ah, alas, not the way. Sometimes you will see climbers reach early for the zone and not really intending it to be the sequence to continue moving up the boulder, but they want to get recorded uh, as that zone ticked off in the least number of tries possible. So you will occasionally see climbers, it doesn't happen all the time, but watch out for somebody making a move that you think is way out of sequence, but in an effort to secure that zone and add points to their scorecard. Yeah, if you find yourself in a kind of trap position, there's, I mean, you might as well try to yeah. keep going up. Really having a hard time kind of standing on that foothold. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's kind of a greasy foothold. It has greasy. that blue <laughs> jib, uh, which is screwed onto it to give you something to think about purchase on. And you saw Maximilian there was trying to stand on top of it, which becomes essentially a smear, I just as he was applying pressure. I was going to say, I wonder if his shoes are a little too soft for this. And it's smart. He brought out another pair of shoes. If you joined us last weekend, I talked about how it's always smart to have multiple styles of shoes because some boulders require you to have a stiffer shoe or a softer shoe and we've seen some athletes like Adam Andra come out with one, one, of each. one of each shoe depending on the style and Maximilian made a great decision to make sure he brought a stiffer shoe out to hopefully help him get through this beginning section of the boulder when they ask <laughs> when they ask so much of you yes like the highest level of every style of climbing it's kind of hard for one shoe to actually be the thing that can get you through everything, you know? I don't know if there is one perfect shoe out there for the things they throw at you in these boulder problems. It's not like being outside where it's like you're trying something, you know exactly what you need to do each time as you're working it. You have four minutes here, so yeah. you have to be very prepared. You gotta be prepared to have whatever you need to do with you. You can't run back behind the wall. There's no phone a friend in the bouldering final. You are alone on the mat here, and just having that option, even if it just is a mental difference, I'm glad I changed my shoe, I'm gonna feel better about standing on this terrible yellow foothold. Good. Almost that was saved almost it. Almost saving it. Such a precarious um, position to be in. It's funny that you said not running behind the wall. I actually, I mean, I actually don't know what would happen if someone was like, I left my shoe back there. Can we send someone else to get a shoe? I, I've never seen that happen. It's a, it's a good I question. wonder if it's a, I, I'm gonna find that out in between men's and women's finals. We'll I wonder if that's chief. something that's kosher or not, because mostly people bring their stuff out, but has it ever happened when someone tried to run back there? No, get, in desperation. Get something different? <laughs> Actually, the body language here is uh, definitely one of frustration. That's a definitely a bit bummed, you can tell. Yeah. Really delicate movement there. You're gonna have to trust your feet so much in order, and you see he brought his nice Yeti bag that was a gift to each athlete as they came to the competition. Yeti is one of the sponsors of USA Climbing, so as the host federation, they gifted everyone with these Yeti bags. So they're nice to keep all of the stuff they need out in front of the wall in one compact, in one compact place. Manner, yes. It's always nice to not have things everywhere. The last thing you want is to have shoes flying, truck bags flying. Keep it, keep it all nice and organized. Exactly. Say Maximilian looking like this is not how he wanted his first World Cup final to go. Interestingly, he's not out of it yet. Definitely not out of it. It's just a tough round all around. <laughs> uh, very different from the semifinals round. It's a little more technical. The coordination's a little bit more difficult. So. And they just ratcheted up the difficulty just a little bit. When you have multiple people top all four boulders, though, in semis, I think it makes sense that the finals boulders get a little harder. Yeah, they kind of have only themselves to blame for the finals <laughs> boulders to get they're just harder. too strong. Yeah, they're just too strong. Oh, see. Kokoro oh. using that bit of height he has to try to move into that zone and able to move his established position. So using the hold and having control of the hold 
thus getting the zone there. Even though he didn't continue upward, he still definitely had control of it, so the judges gave him that zone hold. Yeah, it's something that will, uh, it, it won't be the first time that it comes up across the rest of our broadcast is the, the whether or not you get points for the zone hold. The finish hold is fairly obvious. We've only had one appeal. If you watch the semifinal round, Sean McCall was uh, lost an appeal, or I guess another federation won an appeal for a top that they didn't think that he had earned with control. But zones you'll see are a little bit grayer. You can't just reach up and put a pinky finger on no. the bottom of the zone anymore. You have to actually use the hold. You have to do something that looks like you're using it. You can't just wave at it and carry on. It's, it's something that will be potentially a point of contention. Just a really great example of how awful yeah. the footwork is here. And these are so these gentlemen are not sloppy. Definitely not. They have very good footwork and that just means that it is so difficult. Maybe they need to brush that foot a bit more as well. That I mean, again, right before this round started, we saw the root setters on there as well, and it, it did not look easy. It looked very difficult, mm. but when you're setting for the best in the world. Well, they need to get tested, and Kukula Fuji, let's see if he's able to make the adjustment necessary. This is a good look at the coaches they film every boulder, both for training purposes and also if they need to look back at something and decide if they want to appeal a decision. But the, the amount of data they collect in order to optimize their training is just, it's its a ton of information that it's comes back. really great to have that technology. There's nothing like an instant replay of what you were doing and how you could do things more efficiently or better with things you did great. Kokoro finding that balance point, oh, just, Losing at the last second, so that's kind of the disadvantage to going to the zone first, is not having that right foot up. The idea is to get the right foot up and then press up between those two volumes and then go to the zone. But since he's able to get to the zone first now, he's having to try to bring his foot up later, which is also proving to be difficult. And this is another one of those things where the setters, they see this, right? They see, oh, if, if you can reach that, cool but you might not be able to keep moving if you do that. So maybe if you do the intended sequence, you'll have a better chance of topping the board. Yeah, you, you would have been able to generate opposition on the volumes easier to get the foot up there than trying to use. You look at this zone hold, it, it's a vertical hold. So you're pushing into, we call that a gas zone. So you're pushing away to create opposition nice against the left side of your body. <laughs> But it's not intended to pull down with. And here you need to be able to pull down to get your foot up. A really insecure boulder. Uh, climbers are used to being faced with insecurity and risk. It's some of the tools in the root setter's tool bag is to make the finalists feel like they're going to be falling off every single hold. And this boulder is a wonderful example of slow, steady, and still insecure. One of those boulders where you just feel like you're falling the entire time. Nice confidence here by Yoshiyuki, really intentional with every movement and looking quite comfortable on that foothold that we've seen so many of the men struggle with. Yeah. But again, trying to go first to the zone, making a movement into the volume. We'll see if that does anything for his score. And so that zone pops him up into the top of the leaderboard ahead of a few climbers still to come, of course. But uh, those tops from Kokoro and Sean on boulder number one are really looming <laughs> at the top of the leaderboard right now. Everyone with a zone from the third on down. So it doesn't look like they gave him the zone for that. On the, we are, we're looking at, there's two different scores, so we have another avenue to the score. We'll see if the one in, on your screen here on the bottom left, the, you just look at that third column, that half bar. The, and the column that's highlighted on Yoshiyuki's name, his last name is Ogata, so look right there on your screen. And the highlighted one is signifying the boulder that he is currently on. And right now, because it's still blank, it looks like they didn't give him the zone. Which is interesting because he did move his other hand out of it, but you know it's always up to the judges' discretion. Um, yeah, I mean, I, th I thought he was on it long enough. 
he, he crimped it and moved his hand and crimped it again. Yeah, I thought he, he changed it. his feet. He so it, yeah, there's a judge somewhere making a decision about there's that. There's also perhaps, I mean, you don't know, maybe there's an appeal happening. We yeah. don't know. Still trying to go straight up into it versus trying to move the foot up first, but still plenty of time to get through this, really taking advantage of those brushers there. And staring again at their force now still. We're really asking a lot of the right hand yeah. fingertips crimping down on the top of that zone hold. And I am curious to see somebody solve it the way it's intended uh, rather than reaching as high as they can and then trying to use the zone hold earlier than intended. <laughs> really nice Great. coordination move there that probably isn't the intended beta but really fun to watch from Yoshiyuki. Looks like he's going to try to bring that foot up instead. See if that beta will work a bit better. Just trying to find that right balance position. He's in a better position on the zone now. Yep. Doesn't really stop moving. Now he's actually in now a great position close. to get his foot up. He's kind of finding it. Now he'll just need to Oh my up. goodness. It's such a terrible right. foothold. Oh. At a terrible angle, in order for him to, I mean, you want to be able to bend your shin in between exactly. your knee and your ankle to make it that feel like it's going to be a good foothold. Especially because the hold that he's trying to put his foot on is so flat, it's hard to get any purchase on it for his foot to kind of pull and then rock over on it because it's so easy to slip off something that flat. <laughs> nice oh, save. Great save. So much strength from Yoshiyuki. It looks like he's going to go right hand. And I, I think he doesn't know that they didn't give him the zone up to this point because he didn't make another attempt to go and grab it and yeah. make a movement. So I think it, he thinks that he did enough. And it will be interesting to see if that zone pops up from Later, an appeal. or if he asked the judges at all. But yeah, currently he's got a blank box, so we'll have to wait and see. And this, is, that's, this is a really good look at how difficult the angles are on the start of this boulder. Just forcing that different kind of strength in which you need to be able to hold onto uh, a static body position, which is, can be just as taxing as oh, needing yeah. to generate lots of power the way we saw on boulder one or, or spring and, and lock oh. down a crimp. And right, Zach just started to pull on the start holds and they, they let him down immediately. He didn't actually pull up though, so he, he, he put the one foot up, but not all four points had left the ground yet. So before he could do that, he was quickly deciding to make sure that he had enough chalk, had brushed everything enough because he was already sweating off from yep. the start. In a much better position now to establish on the boulder. Gonna have to work his way through this crazy foot section. See how he's dropped his heel so well. Great ankle flexibility really here. Really great. Just needs to kind of get over it. Yoshiyuki did a cool little coordination move and Zach's gonna actually kind of wrap on the volume with his left hand. That's gonna suck him into the wall nicely, but kind of make it a little out of reach to get to the other volume just because he's pulling in with his left hand. So he's shortening his whole arm. So yeah, it feels it's one of those reach. it's one of those moves that feels comfortable to be in, but is difficult Perfect. to leave. Exactly. So he's left his center of mass, and it's 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 worth watching where that center of mass is, how they're moving around it. It, it is a lot of the ability to control movement. Is do you have a swing? Have you climbed a little bit further ahead so that when you're trailing? foot let's go are you going to come around the corner so there's in this position here there's a lot of subtlety in coming across from the start and Zach the wrap looked great but yeah. it looked like he was uncomfortable to leave it and move across yeah it kind of puts him in a stuck position just constantly looking at his fingers and trying to wave his arms to get as much wind into his hand so that he can stay dry and you know one thing that I've noticed a lot of the athletes doing these days too is bringing fans into ISO so they'll have a fan back there in order to stay cool before they come out and you know he should be used to the heat though he is from Georgia where it's a southern state it's pretty hot it's pretty hot down there but it's, it's always different in a competition anyway like 
there can be just any bit of extra heat when you're on holds like this it's just so difficult yeah, and if you've if you've ever had a session at the gym where you spent just a little bit too long and you can feel your heartbeat in your fingertips <laughs> turn that up to Sign. about a thousand and that's what these finalists are feeling this afternoon so a minute left really Zach. good correction there well, he was committing to it yep. for a second he was in a nice position to kind of rock over going back to that rap method see if he can make this happen here Ooh. oh interesting i hope that i hope that has nothing to do with his shoulder but i mean he's holding his forearm but uh, you know things are all connected so yeah. i don't know if i wonder if he's cramping too yeah hopefully not a tweak and more a bit more of a question of dehydration or something muscle cramp I don't know. We don't know. Actually, we're just honestly we're guessing speculating. here. We're just throwing we're ideas up. Yeah, we're, we're hoping it's not a tweet. Nothing serious. Yeah, anything other than a tweet. So 15 seconds left. This is now going to be Zach versus the zone. He needs to go and get this zone. He's not going to have time to get a top. And I'm not sure that he's going to get around this corner. Looks like he's going to. Oh, he was in a better position, but he's going to yeah. run out of time. That is a, an intricate, what may have appeared to be a relatively simple movement upon first glance or you looking at home saying okay so uh, yeah I get it they just lean back and they match that yellow hold and then they sit on the volume and off you go but the complexity of angles so you remember to take into account the angle of the wall and then the angle of the holds and then how terrible the footholds are and now we're on the third boulder so layer in the two boulders that came before this one in the, the time of fatigue, they have about 20 minutes to rest between each boulder in this format. However, there is a cumulative effect over yesterday's qualification round, this morning's semifinal, and now here we are. So the fatigue factor definitely weighs in. Sometimes it just gets the better of you. Sean Bailey, electing to go, matched on the yellow hole. That looked good. Really trusting his feet there. Sean has great footwork and I mean, kind of a difference there between him and Zach on this really is just trusting the foot. Zach was having a hard time getting around the corner because he wasn't trusting the rock over on his foot, but Sean immediately put all of his body weight yep. on his right foot because he was able to trust it. Also doing the right beta oh, here. Yes. And so good on that his That little feet. bit of hop. This Nicely is huge from zone. Sean Bailey. The crowd is definitely getting amped. Oh, goodness. But to the zone on the first attempt is really big for him. And he was nicely in to the proper beta. So he should be able to get that done again. And he honestly didn't struggle with it at all. He just really stood on his feet, was confident in each foot placement, and kept the momentum going. Just kind of fell out of this a little bit. Just as he started to generate, he reset a little bit of that left foot position, and that's when he started to look really good. And then we'll just see what happens here on the slip. And I think you're right, he just started to tip away, and there's not enough in it with the right hand to hold him in. But Megan and I both just sat forward <laughs> as Sean got his right toe established. That is the right way to get through this sequence, to get you high enough up to be able to use the zone. And we both just leant forward. <laughs> to the a, screen. A great look at this foothold. It's tiny. It sticks out enough. It's probably the best foothold they're going to get on this climb. On this climb. I also think it, the, it was the minute he left his left hand, taking it out of that kind of Gaston press and trying flipping it, took the opposition away. We'll see if he just bites down on the right hand this time. I think that's what he's going to Oh, he is going to oh, flip again. Flip but he, he bit down a little bit more on that right hand, putting him in a better position. Oh, he's going to try to just go right foot Rocco. Which this is, is what they wanted. Really, really, <laughs> really good read of the sequence on this boulder and very nearly executed on that try. Still plenty of time, too, and taking his time, which is really smart on this one, especially given the heat and needing to have your skin stay as dry as possible as to not slip in this beginning session. And I mean, he's looking at his fingers every <laughs> two to five seconds, <laughs> as a lot of the athletes do. Willing the blood to stay behind the last <laughs> layer of skin. Trying to blow every second to keep your skin from sweating. One minute left, he's letting the clock tick down a little bit more, so he's giving himself that rest. He knows there's work to do after he gets up past this zone. 
But if uh, he can get this one-legged step up to to work, I, uh, I'm excited to see if he finishes the boulder. And he looked really good there last time. Oh, a little slip. I think he should get back on the boulder. He has enough to, oh, he's going to no. say no. He's going to say no one else is going to do that boulder. Maybe, maybe Tamoa will do it, but I don't think anyone else has done it. He's going to walk away. Uh, I am a little bit surprised, but he knows better than anybody what his capabilities are and how he's feeling with one boulder to go. I think had he not flashed to the zone, it would have been more likely for him to try again. But if he's paying attention to the crowd and how long each person's out there, he would guess that Tamola hasn't had a top yet and that he could possibly be in a better position than Kokoro right now. Or if mm -hmm. not, he's at least, you know, in second. So kind of weighing his options. I mean, this is a lot to think about. We don't actually know if he is if thinking about this at all. That, but however, he's a seasoned competitor and oftentimes athletes do pay a lot of attention to the cheers and the time that athletes are out there. So they can kind of get a feel. And then just basing it off of how difficult something was and like knowing what you're good at. And this is definitely a strength of Sean's is this style of climbing. So he might guess that, you know, some of the athletes are struggling on this and that would be a proper guess. <laughs> yeah, you would be spot on correct. And Tomo, they're taking a swing at the zone. They're not going to give him uh, control for that. I think maybe he was just going to go and have a look. That yeah, is definitely, definitely. control. <laughs> also, so confident on his yes. feet here. It's so impressive. He doesn't look like he was slipping at all. He just was putting his foot in different orientations on that foothold. I mean, where he just slipped off, I mean, well, that was the very point of the hold, so the most difficult part to stand on, but really digging in and adding that pressure on either side of the hold in a way that we haven't seen the other men do so confidently. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely agree. And it, the slip there came when he tried to apply real force to move upwards from there, but the footwork up to that point was impeccable. Yeah, he should, I would take a clinic right now. <laughs> I would. If, if Tomoe Narasaki was teaching a clinic, uh, I would drop everything and go and check it out. This is a man with so much experience, good in all styles. Oh, yeah. Most definitely. How but, like, I would take an hour-long clinic on just how to move on that foothold. Like, I have no joke. You're going to dial it down a level I, further I, and I, say, I, I'm going to take a clinic on how to do this foot switch. Just that foot switch alone. <laughs> Look at that hip flexibility, too. So good at keeping the hips into the wall. If you don't know climbing that well, one of the easiest ways to put yourself in better positions is to have your hips in. It takes pressure off of your arms and sinks you into nice movements that will help you flow through a bit more. That looked like he just jumped off there. Yeah, I think it looked like he was testing us another uh, another variant to his approach and then decided uh, either, yes, it's going to work, but not this time, or <laughs> no, it's not going to work, and I'm going to go on to plan C or back to plan A. Yeah, again, just managing the time when you're a seasoned competitor like Tomoa. You don't always want to fight through the wrong beta. It's better to keep your time and go back to something else. He does have a lot of time, and he's moving through the start of this boulder with zero issue. <laughs> it's really impressive. So another How check well. on the zone. And I'm Ooh. curious what this, this body is, position is about. I mean, he's getting into more of the right position that they wanted, just in a different way. He's taking like a different route to get there. Yeah. But he's almost finding it. So he is definitely worth noting that he skipped a couple of events looking after his knee so he's it's the first comp that he's come out in in, in quite some time so not that he's going to be nervous by <laughs> any stretch of the imagination but training in your gym is not the same as competing it's really hard to replicate the stress of three rounds of climbing so it's possible that he's feeling it a little bit um, of the conditioning that it takes to climb through three rounds over a weekend. Well, and I, I wouldn't necessarily say he's not nervous. I think all athletes get nervous no matter what. I, but I mean, I think nerves are good. I think if you're not nervous, I don't think you care enough. <laughs> and I think that nerves keep you on your toes to an appropriate degree. But yes, like having taken that time and focusing on healing up. And then also just the fact that the Olympics are again, his big goal, like some of the other athletes as well. You know, you're in a different cycle of training. so. Even with an athlete who is generally one that doesn't fall all the time or 
is always in the lead or more often in the lead in a final. Seeing something like this, I don't think is that um, worrisome because he does have a very different goal coming up in August. That zone establishment here has catapulted him into third place behind Sean Bailey climbing really well, Kukuro Fuji climbing very well, and then Zach, Maximilian, and Yoshiyuki with one zone each. So, as we say, one boulder to go. <laughs> There's still room to flip the table. It's going to come down. The podium is might very well uh, be affected by what happens on this last boulder, but things are looking good for Sean and Kokoro at the moment. As we see Maximilian, the sun just managing to reach the wall here in the afternoon. Maximilian, the start of boulder number four. You are in Salt Lake City with us for the final of the third World Cup Boulder event of the season and the second of our back-to-back -back events. I'm Pete Woods, I'm joined by Megan Martin. We have been watching a really, really engaging finals round. Not a lot of tops, but a lot of very good climbing to this very point. Very good climbing indeed. And ending with one of the more straightforward boulders of the round and very big, exciting jump move at the finish of this boulder which I'm really excited to see all of these men on. Again, we have more of a technical start to this boulder, but then from there it's all about coordination and leg power, and then of course the contact strength that all of the men have to hold crazy swings. Hold. And the finish hold is pretty good comparatively to everything else on this boulder problem. It might be the best hold they come across all day. All day, actually. <laughs> that, well, okay, all day in the final, All right? day in the final, <laughs> there all, might have all been, evening. There might have been some good ones there in the semis. Good, <laughs> we joked last weekend there was uh, the last boulder had what you would think is the best hold you've seen on the boulder, and I was definitely thinking this, I would be overjoyed to find a hold like that on the start of the boulder in the finals. But, uh, it wasn't quite really, really nice good use look. of yeah. the knee to kind of rock over into this press. Maximilian trying to get into this underclay. Oh, fingertips on it. Oh, right in the sun too. Oh man, that sun is bright at this point. You see the big exhale. I almost guarantee you that he's holding his breath to push his way oh, up yeah. through that. It's about finding the way to stay as tight as possible. You can have no sag in your hips moving through a move like that. This is the, gonna be the steepest part of the wall that the men encounter. And I always love when athletes use the press on their knee to move into positions. Mm -hmm. It actually helps so much. It, it seems, at first glance, you might not think that that really makes sense, but whether you're pressing to stand up or pressing over, Pressing your hand on your knee really helps to move your body into the direction you need to go. It's a nice little secret trick there. Yeah, if you're taking notes watching at home, <laughs> this is something that you might never have thought of, but it's something that absolutely can make a difference. Palming down on flat walls, lots of little, little, little tricks. You see the micro adjustments he's making every time to bump that right hand, get that shoulder folded inwards. And you're suddenly asking an awful lot of your shoulder stability on this boulder. And he didn't actually use the press on the knee that time. It was not as close. No. Hopefully it'll come back. It'll, it'll be the inside flag <laughs> of this round. <laughs> oh, yeah, the knee press. The, the knee press. If you tuned into our earlier broadcast, I, I get extremely excited whenever a boulder uses an inside flag on a boulder problem. It's generally more of a move we see in lead climbing, but I always more of it in bouldering so it's a sign of great um, understanding of body positions and I think it's really impressive and I'm a fan of the inside flag. It's, uh, <laughs> Megan the inside flag mark. <laughs> Who's probably only used an inside flag twice in her life but it's fine. <laughs> but recognizes when it has value and that's the, that's the important part here especially when we're sitting where we are. It's about trying to get that little bit of extra information to you and bring you some of the knowledge that we've gained over our years of climbing and competing and hopefully get you into a place where you can have an appreciation for what's going on in front of you on the screen. I really like the way the shadows are playing. I mean, and it looks nice here. It does look nice. They're going to be a little bit upset about the heat on those star holes. Maximilian, uh, appreciative of the crowd. A, a hard fight. It a was rough a day, but a hard fight for Maximilian Milne um, and all respect. Total respect, really good fight here, and he doesn't even know that he climbed a lot. But like right now, he's probably thinking that was not the final I wanted. But the boulders were just hard, and 
he is actually currently sitting in fifth place. Like, I bet he doesn't know that right. and wouldn't think that at all. But the thing is, is that they were just tough boulders this round. And, you know, sometimes they're just hard. And it's all about whether or not you kept trying. And he, I think he fought hard. He showed that he is a very talented climber. Kokoro Fuji getting nicely into the zone. And he's going to have to set up for this swing, kick, and jump to the finish hold. Doing yeah. the right motion, just Doing didn't right get motion. high enough, and his foot definitely slipped as well. So this is a, uh, we're going to get a couple good looks at it, of course, over the next few climbers. This is a, a big, big move, and it's going to involve, again, a fair um, element of coordination. You need to get that left foot moving and planted while you're thinking about pulling down and away on a steep wall. We're at about 20, 20 plus degrees on this wall. There are many factors making this quite difficult. Kokoro Fuji making the first move look um, really good. <laughs> really nice mobility, and he is one of the taller climbers, so maybe getting into that position is a little more comfortable. It's still very difficult, obviously, but he's able to rock over and press a little bit better and kind of get his fingers on that undercling. But what setters often try to do is if, you know, they have athletes that are multiple sizes, they try to keep it just even across the round. So maybe sometimes a boulder might seem a little better if you're taller, but then maybe later in that boulder it could be better if you're shorter or just from boulder to boulder. Just trying to keep it even because obviously everyone's dimensions are different, so there's no way to set perfectly for every height. It's all about exactly. the balance throughout the round. See there. That zone. He needs to generate a lot here. Get a nice foot placement on this volume before he jumps up to that top hold. <laughs> oh, wow. He got up to it. He got a hand on it. He's close. Full commitment to come down on the mats like that. So, Okuro Fuji hunting this top. As you see on the bottom of your screen, one top on boulder number one, followed by the three zones on two, three, and currently four. Looking to fill that last bar on boulder number four to really put himself in a good position. Interesting that the, it's interesting that the men went from such a high scoring semifinal round in terms of topping boulders and then now you're lucky if you have a top currently hoping to maybe get two to finish the round but man just a low completion round here. Sometimes tops are expensive. <laughs> Today they, they are expensive. Very expensive. But he still has a smile. I mean, he appreciates that this is a, a, an interesting piece of movement. Almost looks like he's looking forward to trying it and again. He, he's in a great position, too. Because he already has one top, it's unlikely that anyone really catches ah. up to him other than Sean. So already, this would be likely to be a podium spot for Kokoro, which would be three finals in a row two fourths and a podium. a podium. I mean, he's going to be really happy, even though he might be frustrated after how difficult this round was. Yeah. At the end of this competition, he'll be quite happy. Yeah, they, as much as they are here to win, they are here to top boulders. That's and true. they love topping boulders. So you can win a comp and still wish you top boulders. Oh, for boulders. sure. I mean, the only way to have a perfect comp is to flash every boulder yeah. and end up in first place. Otherwise, there's always something to dwell on. Oh, fingers so close to the good part of that hold. He needs to just be a little <laughs> to the left, but great climbing there by yeah. Kokoro Fuji. The crowd needs to know <laughs> that they appreciate his effort. He just he looks he exhausted. He looks exhausted. And that is the thing, right? Even though boulders weren't topped here, these men had to fight really hard on each boulder. And it's great that he was able to sequence this so well, just not getting enough of the power here. Oh, so, so close. close. Just Again, a little to the left on that top hold, and he would have been in the sinker part of that jug. It's like, well, it's like a mini jug. Yeah. The jug's maybe a little too far. It's not like a big bucket, but it's, it's like a, it's it's a mini jug. It's good. It's good. For it's these good. men, yeah. it's a good hold. It's a great hold. <laughs> Yoshio Yugi Ogata now is coming up and testing the distance to this first hold. Look at the striations in his shoulder. Just so much strength there as he presses out of that start hold. He's got a lot of good power. See if he can figure out this leg swing. He might just... Oh, this could, this could also be a thing. Oh, he got Ooh. close. Very close. 
Quickly brush that, please. Thank you very much. I'm going <laughs> to stick it next time. Thank you for being ready. The only thing I worry about without doing that swing kick to the volume is that putting your foot on the volume first and then generating from there might make you generate to the right a bit more than having kind of that swing tap jump. Yes. So it could possibly make holding the top hold a bit more difficult, but we'll have to wait and see either way. Really great first effort from Yoshiyuki Ogata. And uh, a top from any of the competitors at this point is going to have podium impact. So if Yoshiyuki can get him Self atop of this boulder, he will propel himself into a podium position. Let's see what he can do with two and a half minutes left. Will he stay? He's going to stay with his foot high first. He got close. Just a little slip there. Really, really emphasizing the need for brushers. <laughs> we have so many amazing volunteers here this weekend. And they're all in these really cool blue shirts that actually have multiple languages on the back of them, just kind of keeping to that international vibe since we have people from so many different countries at this competition. So nice to create some unity. 100% agree. The volunteers are a huge factor, even at a local comp in your gym at home. If you get a chance, I recommend volunteering at a comp. Be a judge, be a brusher, be an isolation runner get into the scene a little bit and appreciate what goes on in a competition and you will be uh, definitely rewarded in terms of the gratefulness of everybody competing in that event. Uh, Yosh Yoshiyuki just sliding out of the start hold on that attempt. It's wild because that left undercling is good enough if you can get underneath it and over to the left enough, but until you're fully under it, you really need to have the opposition with the right hand, and he was just slowly sliding out of it. It was uh, hard to watch. Just another boulder where you feel like you're falling off the, the entire the time. Entire time. <laughs> it's like, this is a good look at the angle of the wall, and really, the, that right hand start hold, it's, they're the same thing, you're just sliding down two full hand lengths and running out of shoulder power. This is the cumulative effect of the boulders across today. We've asked a lot of the right hand yeah. over this round. <laughs> and you can see just the, the like imprints from the sweat on his fingertips just in the sun. This time of day is a little, a little difficult to deal with, but the thing is it's difficult for everyone right now, so yeah. they're all having to deal with it and fight through it trying to get into that undercling. Oh, it's just not able to rock over as much. And this kind of movement, too, is one that, you know, it's hard from the start, but not so terrible the first two times, your yeah. first few times you get on it. But the more and more you get on it, the fatigue you have in your hips and your triceps really catches up to you. Yeah. And Yoshiyuki fought hard, had some great attempts, but is just not going to be able to make it happen here today. But is moved up into that fourth position currently, which he'll likely be, you know, pretty happy with when he, I mean, it's not over yet, but he's he's moved up a bit by getting into that zone. So, so close so to those attempts. Those falls are so big. Yeah, I know. It's, it's their full commitment to what needs to be done is, uh, is remarkable, of course. And it's important to remember that fourth place is a shade of disappointment to not be on the podium, but it's fourth out of 60 climbers. Oh, yeah. Anything amazing. in the final is a worthy accomplishment. So all the positions in a final are worth celebrating. Fourth stings a little more. He's Ooh. definitely struggling. There's something going There's something on with going his right on. arm. It's He's holding that elbow, and it's, as you say, it's either a cramp or a, maybe a bit of a tweak. And I do feel like it was his right arm that was hurt before. Um, you know, these athletes have to train so much and they're they're put through so much in every competition too. And like even just little things like any kind of tendonitis. Like mm. I recently had bicep tendonitis and oh my gosh, it, it was so frustrating to deal with. It's like even things like that can when you're pushing yourself so hard become such a problem. But let's see if Zach can work through whatever is bothering him right now. Oh yeah. goodness gracious. This I is hope, devastating to yeah, see. Yeah, it's hard to watch and you hope that he makes the right decision for his season of climbing uh, and not making uh, a decision based on really, really want to get to the top of the boulder. He is. 
He's still definitely thinking about it. Just seems like he's trying to loosen up a bit of whatever is bothering him right now. And again, I mean, a very pressing, intensive boulder. So it's a part of your body that you're going to need to really be working with you right now. He just keeps trying to, like, shake out. It could be a cramp. You know, you could have that compression cramp oh, in man. that bicep. And this is really hard to watch. It's making my arms hurt, too. Mm. And you, you know that he is teetering on the, I know my body, and I'm in a World Cup final. Yeah, it's like, what, how do you make a decision here? It's a, it's a very difficult place to be in. We'll uh, just keep that hope that this is not something that is going to result in a, you know, a serious implication on the rest of his season, while at the same time trusting that uh, Zach Gallo knows himself and what he's capable of and what needs to happen for him to be able to get up We'll get a zone or a top on this boulder. And a good sign is that he hasn't actually asked for a medic yet. Yeah. So, because the athletes can do that. So, that is a good sign here. But see if Zach Gallic can fight through this press section. Ugh. It's just, it's a, uh, this boulder, although it, again, there's not a lot of options in order to get into this body position, hold it and press out uh, the amount of shoulder internal rotation and opposition you need to push between you can't just put your foot on the left hand scoop you need to be pushing hard into it and that power is coming from your right arm exactly and he he's fighting so hard to try to press up into that position and just fighting whatever pain is ailing him right now and it's just Running out of time. Yeah, running out of time and running out of gas. And you see him trying to use his left hand. It's gonna, it looks like he's about to rip up the crowd. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't actually ask for it, but they're giving it to him, trying to support Zach Gala out here as he fights through men's number four. First time in a World Cup climber. Solid competitor. Just trying to make, make something happen here as he's really struggling to get into that right body position. Okay. He's gonna... Give it a brush. A show of one last effort. <laughs> I don't know if he Doesn't hears the clock. Doesn't actually have enough time to keep going, but ooh, let's, yes, campus. And then this go is, straight up. Yeah. He's out of time, but yeah. he wanted to try one last thing. The judges don't love that, but the crowd does. Yeah, exactly. Great effort by Zach Gala. Not the final he wanted, but still tried super hard. Great through the qualification the semifinal round. You know, getting into a final is always a big barrier for athletes. So to do it once, you know you can do it again. So the next time he's in a final, you'll likely see him doing something even more spectacular. Yeah, you're going to carry the confidence yeah, exactly. that you belong. You, know, you, yeah. you don't have that, oh, I got in once. Was that luck or not? And oh, hope, oh, I belong. Here. And hopefully his arm is OK. Uh, we have some medics to the right of us preparing ice already, so they're going to go take care of him quickly as Sean Bailey is up and on men's number four oh, very fast. Down that print right away. Sean Able Bailey to get in that right position. He's having a wonderful he's competition a here. <laughs> See if he can do this swing. Swing and jump. Oh. So, Sean Bailey with that flash to zone is currently sitting in first place. And nobody, nobody can, can take it away. Nobody can catch him at this point. So, Sean Bailey will end up winning his very first bouldering World Cup. And, you know, the only other final he was in, he ended up second. So, this is a good progression. Very good progression. Consistency is key in World Cup competitions and really hard to master. So having made semis last weekend and ending up walking away with the win this weekend, you know, these aren't final results. We don't know if there'll be any appeals or anything, but currently nobody can catch him. And as long as there's no appeals, he will be the winner here today. That's great. And really making that first move look very, very good. And Climbing power is not necessarily about big muscles. It's about using your angles to your greatest advantage. Oh, yeah. And he does a great job with that. Oh! And Sean Bailey with one arm, a move I was talking about earlier, something he's so good at, catching any 
being one-handed and a huge smile from Sean Bailey. First World Cup win, barring any appeals. With an exclamation mark. And also, you know, topping two boulders in one of the more difficult finals we've seen in a while. Creating some serious consistency this year so far. Semi-final in Myringen, semi-final last weekend here, and now finals on top of the podium. Wow, that, great for the home crowd. <laughs> absolutely, really, 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 really fantastic for USA climbing as a whole to have this level of success. Sean Bailey absolutely putting a stamp on the finals with this performance in front of the likes of Kokoro Fuji, Tomoro Narasaki, Yoshiyuki Ogata. These are really, really seasoned finalists. We're going to see what Tomoro can do here. He has uh, he has got a podium. And it's a question of what color the medal is. Wow! Oh, wow. A flash from Tomoro Narasaki. You know, I, when I think about this boulder, all I could think of is, wow, this last move just has Tomoro's name written mm -hmm. all over it. And after a disappointing final for him, it is a great way to end the round doing what he does best in flashing boulders. <laughs> flashing boulders uh, with authority. So that is going to give him third place. Really great climbing there from Tomoe Narasaki. Difficult round for him, but saw this boulder, saw that it was straightforward, all of the things that he excels at in his skill set, and really this move specifically, it's, I can't think of another move that says Tomoe more, and he does it with such confidence, grace, and absolute power. So exciting to see Tomoe Narasaki top that final boulder, putting him in a podium spot. Great way to start the season for him. Again, it's not just the World Cup season on his mind this year, but also the Olympics in August. The first time sport climbing will be in the Olympics, and it'll be that combined discipline of bouldering, speed, and lead. It'll be competed in the order of speed, bouldering, and lead at the Olympics. And Tomo Narasaki has to be excited with that finish and knowing that his training that he's doing right now is right on track for that big Olympic Games in Tokyo. His home country of Japan currently doing the flower ceremony for the men. You have Tomo Narasaki in third, Kokoro Fuji in second, and Mr. Sean Bailey of the USA with his first World Cup win is going to get his flowers here. And then after this, we're going to have a quick interview with Sean before the actual podium ceremony. But as you can see, Sean Bailey is so excited. You know, he is an athlete who has been talented enough to find himself in a position like this. It just hasn't always come together. So to have it come together in front of a home crowd like this, originally from Washington, spent a lot of time training there up at Vertical World and kind of bounces back between that state and here in Salt Lake City. Training here as well. So exciting to see Sean Bailey on top of the podium. So here are the men's final results. Sean Bailey in first, Kokoro Fuji in second, Tomoe Narasaki in third, Yoshiyuko, Yoshiyuki Ogata in fourth, Zach Allen in fifth, and rounding out your top six, it's Maximilian Milne. And both Zach Gala and Maximilian in their very first Bouldering World Cup Finals. So really exciting stuff here today for the men. Lots of firsts happening. And we're going to have that interview with Sean Bailey done by our my lovely co-commentator. Co wow, the words here. Mr. Pete Woods will be with Sean Bailey doing an interview momentarily. And then following that, we'll have that award ceremony and we're gonna see the women in a bit as well. But man, what an exciting final for the men here today. Now let's go to that interview with Pete Woods and Sean Bailey. Sean Bailey, <laughs> gold here in Salt Lake City, what is the first thought in your mind right now? Oh man, I, I don't know, man. I, 
I, I can't even think right now. I just never thought this day would come, and it's crazy that it came. <laughs> you absolutely threw... People are loving it here. You absolutely threw down in this final. Hard boulders, topped one, topped four. How did you feel in that last jug on boulder number four? It was all over your face. <laughs> Sucks, man. Um, yeah, it was hard. There's two super hard boulders, and um, I, I just wanted to find some success on something again, so I just like to try hard on it, and it was a big, big hug, and... Yeah, went for it. <laughs> you went for it and you stuck it. Gold medal at home. You've been on the podium before in Vail. America is good to you on the World Cup circuit. Yeah, more US comps. Let's, let's do it. <laughs> Super excited for you, Sean. Congratulations. Well-deserved gold medal here. Is there anything else you want to tell these people who are watching here in Salt Lake City? Oh, just thank you guys so much. And the crowd hype is real, so thank you. <laughs> Congratulations, uh, go enjoy this, and we're gonna watch the women's final now. Cool, thank you. Really nice interview there from Sean Bailey. So exciting to see him walk away with a win here. And it should be noted too that he was very close to qualifying for the Olympics a few times this in the 20, 2019 season. And I know it was really a big bummer for him to not make that team. So having a win, Early on in the season here in a bouldering event, we mentioned earlier, if you were joining with us, that he has succeeded in lead multiple times. That was really the discipline that he was best at originally, but he has put some strides into bouldering, becoming more and more consistent. His second podium now in Bouldering World Cups, second in Vail in 2018, and now first here in Salt Lake City in 2021. Awesome climbing from Sean Bailey and all the men. A very difficult round. They never gave up. They fought hard. And it was great to see just so much fight and try hard out there. And congrats again to Sean Bailey. Absolutely speechless. <laughs> um, I, it's, uh, it's so interesting to see climbers in that moment. And the, he came around behind the wall. <laughs> His eyes are wide looking looking so excited first world cup gold and you have to truly believe that he was speechless yeah it is really cool to see <laughs> see that happen to have those moments those are those dream come true moments right uh, we heard natalia grossman talk about that last weekend if you joined us for the salt lake city world cup last weekend and it's like these are moments you dream of you hope to be on top of the podium and everybody puts so much time and effort forward towards that goal and when it can actually happen it's like a dream come true so yeah, and I got a chance to sit down with her this weekend, and uh, she had some, uh, some really good insight into her climbing and, and where it's going. It's been really special to compete, you know, in hometown, kind of. I mean, I live in Boulder, Colorado, so I don't live out here, but it does kind of feel like, you know, a little bit of time. You know, the whole team here and a really amazing crowd of local climbers, so it was so awesome this past weekend to have their support, and we could really feel it on the mats for all the cheering and um, everybody wanting you know, us to succeed. Just, uh... Oh, a little flare there from Brooke Roberts, you know, a nice smile and another flash. I've also never done uh, World Cups back-to-back, -back, which is really exciting, I've always wanted to. It's kind of like, you know, two chances and just more competing, I feel like after the thrill of a competition weekend, I always want more. And so I'm excited to get more this weekend. In the second Boulder event of the year, an unbelievable performance, really dug deep. Climbing with strong people is definitely helpful. I think both of us have seen that climbing together as well, that we push each other. I moved out here in January, but I've been spending a lot of time here since like September. And I've definitely seen like my climbing levels improve since I've been around here and having a, all the other strong girls, there's so many strong girls here who push me and it's pretty cool. I, and I think we dreamed of and more and so this weekend is just another opportunity to, you know, push ourselves and kind of just the cherry on top of. I think both of us, I mean, we climb because we love it and that'll be the same whether we do well or we don't do well. And some, you know, in the moment that can be really hard to realize, but in the end, one competition 
won't make or break it, especially break it, it can make it. But <laughs> um, so you can't take last weekend away and this weekend's here just to have more fun. Couldn't say it any better. <laughs> <laughs> Really great to hear from uh, two strong young American climbers. They will be looking to uh, work on those performances from last weekend. We are going to see this final coming up shortly. Natalia Grossman, Stasha Geo, Brooke Rabatou, Orian Barton, Miho Nanaka, and Yanya Garnbrett. A tough act to follow, <laughs> but if anyone's going to stand up to the challenge, it's going to be these six women right here. Yeah, we have a really stacked field here with the women. Four of these athletes were in the final last weekend. Yanya wasn't in the competition last weekend. And this is the first final for Stasha since, you know, for a while because she was out in that 2019 season with that knee injury. So this is big for her to be back in a final. But here we're going to start with Natalia Grossman on a pretty technical first boulder for the women. It's... um. One that she's reading really well currently, but there's some interesting body positions in this one and use of the arete, which I always love to see. And actually the zone hold, hold you can't see yet, but you're gonna have to stand up into the zone hold that's in this next section of the arete. Wow, so standing on delicate, delicate feet. Uh, nice toe hook with that left foot. Really nice counterbalance. She has shown to be a very precise climber. She executes very, very well. Conservation of movement, doesn't make a lot of extraneous movements when she's climbing through boulders. Now what she's gonna wanna do is get her right foot where her left foot is here in order to get the left foot on that other left foot to the left of the volume. There's <laughs> lots of left, <laughs> left right, left, left right. But right now. look at that foot switch. Yes. So much control, so good on her feet. And then there actually is an inside flag. Oh, oh nailed it. you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> Natalia Grossman with a flash, so first attempt top of boulder number one <laughs> she has come out swinging with the inside flag and she's going to feel really great about that she had to fight very hard in that semi-final round and it was looking like it, she might not end up making it and with the very last boulder she was able to put herself into the final so having to come out in the final and flash the first boulder is going to put her in a nice head space moving forward yeah, absolutely if you've just tuned in um, you are now watching the women's final here in Salt Lake City. The second of our back-to-back -back climbing weekends, the men's final went down uh, just, finished just moments ago. <laughs> I'm Pete Woods, I'm joined by Megan Martin. Uh, we are excited to bring you the women's final now in Salt Lake City. The six best climbers from the women's field uh, climbed in their semi-final this morning, and then now they're out for their four finals boulder. So this is Stasha from Serbia. She is uh, the second climber out out of the six and what we're trying to do here now is go six climbers down to our podium of three four boulders in this round the climbers have four minutes to try each boulder versus five from the rounds before the difference here is that they had a preview it's almost getting established on this first move uh, they had a preview session where they walked through all the boulders so they've seen them ahead of time so we take a minute off the clock and they get four minutes to try the boulders and then they also get almost getting at that time uh, the climbers also get a longer rest so the root setters can set harder more complex boulders because they have that preview they have some discussion with their teammates and sometimes with their competitors and then they get about a 20 minute rest between each boulder so all the women are going to climb boulder number one six to first and then repeat it two three and four as we watch stasha figure out this opening move and start working delicately around the corner a really nice adjustment there from Sasha on that opening move because she was trying to go in a more dynamic fashion quite a few times in a row and finally settled back into more of a static way of doing it and that's what ended up working for Natalia Grossman as well so definitely a good idea to switch to that method or beta because it seems to be the more efficient one but Really exciting to see Sasha back in a final. She's been in multiple finals throughout her career and 
you know, her first comp back from having to recover from a knee injury was the Europe Continental Championships, where she actually placed second behind Victoria Mishkova, who got that Olympic spot. So it was really, you know, that's a rough year for Stasha, not mm -hmm. to get to compete at the other two events where you could make the Olympics and have literally one shot due to an injury. So being back here is a great boost of confidence for her, her this year. Yeah, absolutely. And she is an exciting climber to watch. She's very dynamic, very powerful. Uh, and as we mentioned, if you were watching in the semifinal round, her emotions show on uh, almost every attempt. And I, uh, I like to see it. I like to see when people are trying hard. I like to see when they're putting everything they have into their time on the mat, especially in a final round. Kind of struggling with this foot switch here. It looked like she was going to try to match down low and then bring her right foot up. We saw Natalia Grossman kind of just do a foot hop switch here, which is a difficult move to do. She did make it look easy, but it is difficult. But this looks like a better method that Sasha, Stasha is going with. It looks a little more secure, especially with her height here. She can stand comfortably on that. Ooh, nice save. Just a good wow. save. Very good save. And again, Natalia came out and back behind the wall quickly, so Stasha knows that she was able to get it done quickly. And again, that inside flag is the way. I love how they have to kind of teeter over, grab the hand, and throw the foot to stop them from barn dooring. And it's absolutely beautiful. Pete loves that I love the inside flag. He is cracking up at me currently. <laughs> it's And it's because it's such it seems like it should be obvious, but there's so many things you could otherwise try and do to control the movement that's going to come out of this faith tip over to this last hold. The right side of your body, anybody that doesn't do the inside flag, you're going to see what happens with the right side of their bodies. You just see a good look at Stasha here working your way up the corner, getting a good look at just the balance points required to move across. But the you will see the momentum and the inside flag is the easiest, if slightly more coordinated solution. And this will be the third time that it's come up <laughs> in the last week and a half. And uh, it's uh, well spotted by Megan. Well, and it's funny too, because honestly, the setters, they set such diverse movements. And so it is so cool to see that the inside flag, I mean, and the inside flag is not always the intended beta. There's always other options, but it's cool to see that move specifically sneaking up now and again. <laughs> Brooke great. Rabbits are reading this really nicely. Again, an athlete that's really good on her feet if you did tune in to the semifinals. She absolutely walked the fourth boulder in semis, which was so footwork intensive mm -hmm. and very small, uncomfortable holds to stand on, but she's able to trust her feet well. It's definitely one of the skills that's high up in her skill set needs to make that foot switch here. Gonna go with the same method that Natalia did. Nice save on that bobble. Oh Definitely looking for a flash here. Oh, nice close up with that foot. You can see that she's on the textured part that's sticking out, but that part around it is very slippery. She's just trying to turn her hips a little so she can rock over. Her right foot's not in the perfect position. No. And she's just trying to figure out how to get out of it without kind of messing up her timing. Not able to make it happen, but and that's the subtlety of finals boulders is you're going to want to see Brooke turn her right foot inside more so that she can generate momentum going to the left. Uh, and when you're standing on big holds moving between big movements, you can have uh, imprecision in your foot placement and you can adjust. When the footholds are this small and the movement is this precise, you have to get all of the angles right. And you just saw her Climbed herself into a position she couldn't reverse. We'll see if she can correct that. that I'm not even gonna. The knee press, it's so, it makes it so much easier to rock over on your foot. And again, another move that I love. Uh, uh, there you see the right foot. She does twist it. That's the difference in uh, sticking that flag. Big smile, Brooke Rabbit too. I mean, still happy. She's been climbing for 13 of her 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> um, and still smiling on almost every boulder. And I, actually, I think that's more competing for 13 of her 20 years. You're probably <laughs> right. She's probably been she's climbing for 19 climbing of them. Right after crawling. <laughs> but yes. yes, a very um, accomplished competitor on the youth side, and you know, struggling a bit to find her flow on the adult circuit. But really, after qualifying for the Olympics, 
seeing that momentum pick up a bit more and being very consistent so far this season, having made the two semifinal or now three semifinals and two finals in a row when the entire 2019 season, I believe, she was a spot out of semifinals almost every single time, which was extremely frustrating for her. So to come back and kind of turn it all around is pretty impressive. Yeah, it's a bit of a breakout season just this year. And here, another breakout, <laughs> Oriane Berton from France. Nailing the dynamic Nailing the first way. move. 16 <laughs> years old, one of the youngest finalists you're gonna see. This is the first year you can be allowed to compete on the open circuit is at 16 so this is Oriane and she showed great poise through all rounds so far that is a really nice knee bar. really nice <laughs> control over the swap in the corner and she's working on her flash attempt seeing if she can figure out the best way to switch her feet we've seen two methods and she's kind of in between the heights of mm -hmm. Natalia and Stasha so either beta could work Ooh, a Ooh. little too slow. Not a lot of space there to kind of, and if you were matching your hands, you'd call that more of a piano match, but I mean, I guess that's applicable to the feet, sort of. Yeah, it's she sort wasn't of swapping, she was more like kind of moving her feet off one edge of her foot at a time. Onto the other, and yeah, a good look at that foothold. And when, there's a couple different ways you can choose to swap your feet. We've seen a couple of them, the one you sort of move as quickly as possible, and there is a moment when you're trying to get both feet on at the same time where you run out of friction on either side, and what again there, just just unable to hold the change in balance. When you're climbing, we call it slab. If you're not that familiar, anything that's um, less than the vertical angle, so uh, imagine a wall that's just gently tipping away from you. It allows the root setters to set very, very, very intricate balancey boulder problems in which you don't need to use your hands and just getting the first move wrong, a little bit of excitement, first boulder, there's always gonna be adrenaline as you step out for your first boulder in a final and it just needs to settle it down and get back up there. But when she gets back up to the top, as I'm sure she will, you'll see that the handless movement is made possible because of the wall angle and uh, the root setters can do an excellent job to force insecure movement without your hands. It's so cool to see how different the styles are. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, Orion is literally climbing this boulder so dynamically and with so much coordination that is working for her. It's not necessary or even the intended beta. Even that first move, the way she's doing it, is similar to, to what was the intended beta from the third boulder in finals last weekend, if you mm. actually got a chance to watch that. That same kind of foot swap, but that wasn't something that was intended. It's just something she, she feels like makes sense for her style. Um, so it's kind of cool how you can apply your own style to the boulders, even if it's not always the intended way. Exactly, You're, when <laughs> the dust settles, it's just you and the boulder, and the root setters can have all the best intentions. And it, I love that she's doing that. It's it, so fun to it's watch. It's so fun to watch, you're right. It's uh, She's an engaging young climber, and this is, Got to switch, there we go. Oh, uh, just falling out of it. Her hips just sagged to the right a bit too much to be able to hold that um, counterbalance there, that compression move. And with 30 seconds to go, this is gonna be a boulder where she needs to hustle, uh, but won't want to at the top, so. Well, and with her beta, she actually she can't. If, if any of the other women who did that lower beta differently, I don't think they would have been able to Ooh. hustle, but I think she's gonna make it happen. And oh, we're on the tone. Wow. With five seconds to spare. <laughs> that was the most dynamic I'm performance on that. I'm out of breath, out of know, breath right? from the four minutes of climbing that Oriane just she put down. She basically just did a cardio workout on this boulder. Such cool movements that she chose to do and real confidence there. Able to get that boulder done. So much promise from this young competitor. Yes, absolutely fantastic piece of climbing uh, at the wire, as we say. <laughs> Going to bring us Miho Nanaka from Japan, an absolute powerhouse, has podiumed in half <laughs> of her boulder competitions. So impressive. And earlier this weekend, podiumed in the speed competition, which is remarkable. Is so remarkable. And, you know, if she ends up with a podium here, she will be the first woman to have ever podiumed in two disciplines at the same time 
in the same weekend Which because we haven't ever had a Boulder lead weekend together. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, a remarkable, remarkable performance on Friday in the speed event. <laughs> Mio doing Bam. the knee press. Just I'm just going to keep a list press. of <laughs> things that Megan thought might happen. We're two for two right now. <laughs> knee press inside flag. She just needs to figure out how exactly she wants to approach, approach, approach the foot switch. <laughs> approach that foot switch and Perfect nice execution control. there. So you're just seeing the current scoreboard here. Full bars are tops on the boulders. You see Miho on the Ooh. right hand side. Ooh, just missing the last move. Took a second to readjust on mm -hmm. her foot placement there, which actually looked like it kind of knocked her off the boulder a little bit. But easy adjustment. She got up there with a lot of ease, and she is such a seasoned competitor that I, I find that she remembers her beta well. In some of the younger competitors, you see them occasionally forget kind of how they got somewhere quickly, but not, not a mistake that you would normally see someone like Miho make. Agreed. So this is just a good look. If you're not familiar with the scoring, uh, on the bottom left there, the bars, the W1, were on women's boulder number one. That half bar means that she achieved the zone hold. And then the full bar will be if she gets a top, and we're three empty bars to go. So we're on the first boulder, and you see the attempts there is going to count the number of attempts it takes each climber to get to the zone hold and then the number of attempts it takes to get to the top. So that's the T and the Z. It looks like her yeah. shoe Velcro has come off there. Maybe not bothered oh, by it. Oh no, a little short there again. Yeah. And after her first attempt, she really cinched it down more. So looks like she's having trouble. A quick look at our brushers and volunteers, which volunteer is spelled in English, Italian, and French on the back of their shirts. It's kind of a cool little aspect to add. Yeah, it's just nice to recognize that the World Cup community is truly a global community. You have climbers here from all over the world. The only nation that we used to see that we're missing is the Korean Federation who did not make the trip over, but representation from almost all others. Miho getting the crowd on her side with a minute to go. I would have said that she would have done it no problem second go, but she's just having a bit of a, a, a moment trying to work out where to get the momentum from uh, to get to the last move, and she's come up short twice now. So we'll see if she gets it sorted out on this third try. She's really good with the foot switch here. I think she's not leaning over as slowly as everyone else. She's trying to kind of create that motion all in one, whereas the other athletes who finished that boulder slowly teetered over to that foothold, stayed in that stable position, and then generated to the finish. And so it's just a little too fast. She just needs to slow it down a little. Yeah. Oh, little and that's what happens when, you, when you're when you looking at 30 seconds on the clock and you tend to rush your movements. We saw Orien pull on a little bit more. She probably had 30 seconds on the clock uh, and sprinted this boulder to the finish. Miho is going to be in similar mindset. Both of them kind of doing that lower section faster than some of the other women. Now this foot switch is going to need to make happen pretty quick. And she doesn't want to go too fast here. Is she going to be, oh, so close. Miho Nanaka coming up a half a hand shy on boulder number one, but still smiles. She <laughs> is happy to compete every time we see her out. It, the, her, the joy that climbing brings her is just so apparent and so fun to watch her climb. Even when she is frustrated or things aren't going exactly her way, she does keep that attitude positive and really is a joy to watch. Mm -hmm. You see, just the difference there is, as you were saying, a few degrees in the decision to tip farther to the left. And now we're going to see if Yanya can flash this boulder as we have become accustomed to. <gasps> My fault. <laughs> I, I had nothing to do with that. My fault. 21 <laughs> gold medals across all disciplines. Uh, a remarkable, remarkable career so far from the young athlete. 20 two years old. I, it is so wild to think that she's only 22. She's accomplished more than most people will in their entire career mm -hmm. in, you know, just a few years <laughs> and really is the dominant force in climbing. I, I've been referring to her, her as the Michael Phelps of climbing. <laughs> that's that's you know? a good one, yeah. I mean, she is so dominant and people 
expect to see amazing things from her, and she doesn't disappoint. Disappoint. She is such a fantastic climber, so understands beautiful. movement so well, mm -hmm. and she's so strong. And it's gonna. And be that, that the is, only other option. That is such a typical Yanya move where she does it differently than everybody else, and it's just because she can. Yeah. Right. She just makes it work. She understands what she's good at, what her body's capable of. Sure, there's the barn door that might happen going with two hands, but what does she do? She immediately jumps up into the top even more. You'll see it right here. Really engages the shoulder, throws that left foot out to keep her from barn dooring, and that right foot also to keep the counterbalance there and keep her in a more steady position. Just excellent climbing from Yanya. Her understanding of how to uh, absorb, generate, and control momentum is currently second to none, and I'm going to say in either field, men I, or I women. I 100% agree with you on that. Yeah, so a difference of a, a slip on the start hold puts Natalia Grossman at the top of the leaderboard for Grabatu uh, and Yanya tied right behind her, and then Orian and Stasha with uh, just attempts to top being the difference there, and Miho unable to get a top on the first boulder, but it's only boulder number one. Uh, there's three to go. Anything can happen. There's lots of different styles you're going to see over the course of this women's final. Natalia Grossman now climbing in the afternoon sun now. It's going to warm these holds up. So something that to pay attention to, especially when the friction is not really high. Nice Natalia done. just looking determined. And that cross move is one of the harder moves on this boulder. Now, from this angle, that right foothold might look kind of good, but it's pretty shallow. And these hand holds, especially in the sun, are going to be kind of difficult to hold on to. And we're going to see a flash here from Natalia Grossman grabbing that pocket hold that's a little slopey, but the way she was able to con control that, the way she was able to control each movement there just nicely into that finish hold. Wow, another wow. flash there for Natalia Grossman. Really going to put some pressure on yeah, some she, of these other women. <laughs> turning the heat up. She has signaled her arrival <laughs> on the tour and in this final, which is what we're concerned about right now, but that is excellent execution back to back. Flashing boulders, it does not get any better in a final than flashing boulders. If you're not super familiar with some of the terminology, if you do the climb first try, we call that flashing the boulder. It's just a climbing specific term that we like to use. And uh, that's two flashes from Natalia Grossman. And obviously you just want to be efficient in general in a climbing round, but it really rewards you in terms of how much energy you have. So from boulder to boulder, if you're doing them in fewer tries, each time you get to a new boulder, you have more energy than someone who used up all four minutes on there on that boulder before. So not only is it better for your score, but it's better to keep being successful in the round if you can just get things done in one try. Absolutely, <laughs> and attempts are gonna be the difference maker when we come down to breaking any type of tie. So we care about getting to the top of boulders, we care about getting to zones, and then we care about the number of attempts. So all four pieces of the puzzle come into play. Uh, number of attempts to get to the tops, number of attempts to get to those zones. So those are gonna be the difference makers. You see on the bottom of your screen there, the bars represent where they are right now. The open highlighted bar means they're on boulder number two. And you see the full bar on the first column. And that's just sending topping boulder number one and then we have the attempts from the side. So you're gonna see some differences um, based in leaderboard position that might not be immediately obvious, but that will be the difference in number of attempts, and that's how we separate. Stasha trying to set up for this cross move. Natalia was able to make it happen pretty easily, but really struggling to get around that cross a bit more to find the right body position to be able to hold that hold a bit better. It's a difficult cross that those holds are pretty slopey and it's definitely not helping with the sun shining down mm -hmm. on them. And it looks like, I think her middle finger is taped. So adding any tape on a boulder like this is gonna make it a lot harder to get the friction that you need in order to stay on the hold. But Sasha's a fighter and I expect to see her try extremely hard to get this move to figure out exactly where she needs to be in order to get on it. Now, throwing that left hand up is another option. When I was talking to the root setters earlier, they did mention to me that you can do that move two ways, cross 
and kind of hang it and then come into it or try to go and bring that second hand in quicker to give yourself a little more stabilization. And, and the biggest thing that Stash is missing here is just generating enough momentum to get high and farther to the left. And that's going to make the body position more ideal when she brings that right hand down on the next hold that we're about to do. She's going to elect for... It's nifty. That is that an interesting way to look at things. It did look a bit better. Like She looked like she was in a better position to actually stay on the hold, but she did shake her head after, so I'm not exactly... <laughs> maybe she thought that that wasn't true. <laughs> yeah, there's, a, there's some things to be learned of, as the viewer in what a climber maybe thought about uh, an attempt or a boulder by just looking at the way they look at their hands or look at the holes or shake their head and that was a shake of the head and we might not see it. Not going back to it. Mm -hmm. That looks better too, but yeah, she's just not rocking over enough before she does the cross, like leaning into that left side and putting more pressure on her foot, kind of trying to move the knee more past the ankle. Yeah, that's a, a good description of what needs to happen is she needs to climb around herself, really, <laughs> to get over there. Gonna... Oh, going back to the heel. I, I thought the heel looked good, but it does put a lot more pressure on your hands. And then it's going to make it harder to keep them from sweating, too. It's another aspect of that. That's something to think about. Nostasia will be a little bit frustrated, I think. If this is a boulder uh, she would have definitely expected while looking at it to get to the zone on. This is a, a look at up there almost every time, but moving just a bit too violently to be able to <laughs> hang on to a hold that, that has not that much friction. So you need to be able to generate enough momentum to get to the hold, but not so much momentum that you then can't control the amount of force that you've put back down. So it's a, a subtlety of movement that is not uncommon and I almost feel like too, Stasha is the tallest competitor in this competition and it almost looked like she was a little too high as well. Like when Natalia was able to stick it, she kind of hung on it better and Stasha wasn't able to have her arm as straight, so that could be an aspect too. Brooke Rabbitu on her first attempt here, bringing in that left hand, that other option, kind of floating your way through yeah. that cross move nicely into this first boulder. A really good description and you watching climbers float between holds is a, a sign that they have the power dialed in <laughs> just right. Exactly. Nicely into the zone. Just needs to kind of keep it together here, keep the hips in, really rock over the feet, lock off, get into that slopey finish hold, and a flash for Brooke Rabatil. The Americans picking up where they left off last <laughs> weekend, coming out blazing on boulders one and two. Really, really great from Brooke and Natalia. Really, really good composure here. You saw after she did that earlier move, the first cross, she kind of took a second to breathe and then continue on through the boulder. And that last move, she she is the smallest competitor in this final. She's only 5'2 with a point five ape index. Which is small. It's very small. And again, I'm not sure what that is in centimeters, but it's a lot smaller, so she really had to use every bit of that lock-off power to reach and get to that final hold, and she was able to make it happen. It's, uh, it's a, been a joy to watch the climbing over the last couple of rounds. Just really showing that the age is not a factor. Yeah. It's experience, uh, confidence, and composure, and another great example of it is Marianne Burton. Be to see if she can put a flash down on boulder number two. Just a little slip there, see if she can recover and work on that cross move. Didn't seem like she found the most comfortable position. It was kind of, it was interesting too, she wasn't just placing her foot, she kept like hopping it mm -hmm. a bit instead of kind of settling into that position, which is a sign of discomfort. <laughs> yeah. So she kind of, she kind of jumped off and going to take another look at it and speaking of age not being a factor this is a very mature move to take mm -hmm. let me just take a step back sit down relook at this something didn't feel right and you know take it all in not you know hammer it time after time after time 
exactly. The, Very mature climbing. You don't want to get ahead of yourself, uh, although your instincts often tell you, just jump back on and do it. You've only one move. You've only tried one move. Uh, you have to calm those thoughts in your mind and say, just settle, settle, settle. And she uh, is a climber that moves um, definitely quickly between holds. Uh, also precise, but not in the same kind of level that we were watching Natalia. Just a different approach to how to move between the holds. And you see that it's letting her down a little bit on that left foot. Those footholds, I mean, Megan mentioned earlier, <laughs> they're awful. And the root setters took a grinder. You see where that U shape is. Uh, the bottom half of that is a different texture and it creates a bit of a lip. And they took a grinder and smoothed out the lip. So that hold is worse than when it came out of the box. And what it's doing is forcing uh, the climbers to be very, very careful. And Orian is just maybe not quite careful enough with that left foot placement. I also think she's not putting enough pressure into the foot when you're on a hold like that. Um, I think your instinct is to not put enough pressure on it because, oh, I might slip. But in reality, you need that pressure on the foothold in order to actually use it and keep it from slipping. So that last attempt looked a lot better with the foot placement and just even the cross motion in general. So maybe she's kind of figuring out that uh, movement that she needs to find. Uh, still a good chunk of time on the clock. This boulder isn't that long. I feel like you can get through it pretty quickly if you can get through that first section. So we'll have to see what she can come up with here. You hear the crowd behind us starting to get behind her. The, there we uh, go. The, the crowd can sense when you need a little bit of a boost <laughs> maybe to help can. you up. So 45 seconds now. This is getting into, and she top rolled her one with 30 seconds to go. Not something you want to make a habit of. Definitely not something you want to make a habit of, but she's clearly good under pressure. So yes. she, she had that move a second ago, kind of rushed it there. Not ideal, but I think it's a good idea to keep trying at this point because she saw how quickly the other two women came back from their attempt, yes. so she knows that it's been topped. But unfortunately, she's not gonna be able to do that here and more get to the zone. But lucky for her, she does have one top under her belt. Yep, that goes a long way, and we'll uh, add that into the multitude of factors that go into a finals. You need to control the emotion of not being successful uh, on a particular boulder and be able to move on. She still has two boulders to go, and you don't know what's gonna happen. The temptation is to be frustrated and kind of kick the chalk bag mentally around and say, I can't believe I didn't do bolting number two and I just ran in my grasp. Man. And you spiral very, very quickly. So to be able to pull yourself around the mental game uh, as a young competitor is not easy by any stretch of the imagination. And uh, hopefully she's able to get around whatever thoughts come with not sending a boulder. Uh, although you shouldn't expect to top four boulders in a final, you do <laughs> want to. Yes. Miho taking her first attempt here did not get a top of women's number one, so is going to be looking to get to that zone quickly and then hoping for a top as she can pretty well guess that everyone else got a top. <laughs> so she's just trying to keep herself in the running, stay calm, let her body do what she instinctively does know how to do after being in the game for so many years. And important to note, another one of the Olympic qualified athletes here competing this weekend so another goal overall in mind but still looking to do great here and definitely capable of it mm -hmm. and you saw her looked at her fingertips maybe just a little bit of that heat and sunshine adding to the difficulty to generate the friction required on a move such as this and she's definitely got that the footwork looks right just about maybe a little bit extra core to control that swing I think too that bringing up the left hand is a little more secure of a method so if she goes with this cross with a little bit more oomph and just kind of rolls into it more and then can bring that left hand up it seems like she could be more successful on that move pressure's working really hard there's only uh it's not two brushes on every boulder so the, the brushes are gonna, gonna earn their keep <laughs> across the final brushing every boulder across the round Two minutes to go. Miho won't be stressed yet, but definitely 
needs to get some upward progress to start to feel comfortable in this round. It's just, just a bit not low. finding that motion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It doesn't look smooth, which is something I would not have said very <laughs> often about Miho climbing. Yeah. But it looks a bit kind of mm, jarring. Yeah, she is generally a very smooth climber, has a lot of contact strength, really understands movement, whether it be dynamic or more static, has great hip flexibility too, but yeah, just having a hard time just finding the flow here. That's yeah. better. Oh, oh no! Whoa, a little oh, slip. Oh my goodness, yeah, I definitely, you saw her look at her fingers and say, You can see the, what? Yeah, you can see the imprints. hand streaks. A little behind. moisture in the dry, dry Salt Lake. It's still, it's just still hot. Your hands are still sweating. Ugh. But Oof. again, that that pull through and then come in with the left hand does seem to be the beta that works a bit better. I mean, it's always secure if you can get that other hand on a hold. There she does it. Nice take this time. Really focused on throwing that foot too to avoid kind of slipping off again. Nicely into the zone. Honestly, a boulder I would have maybe put a chalk bag on for. Oh, wow. The zone uh, will help. Definitely help. But I... Is she going to walk away? Well, so this yeah. is a great strategy here. She's noticing that the holds are pretty slippery considering how hot it is. And she just got the zone. 40-something seconds on the clock. Maybe she can do it. But... Maybe she can't. Maybe she wastes another attempt. She knows what the next two boulders are coming up. So strategy-wise, I think it's a good idea to not only just save skin, but energy, because the likelihood of making it back up there in 44 seconds is kind of cutting it close. Yeah, it's a bit It's a bit rough, and you need to climb quicker than you want to. And there, again, just a little bit short. You need to be up into the middle. Those scoopy holds are at their best right in the middle of the shape. That's where there's the most depth, the most depth and the largest scoop. See what Yanya can do. Faced with boulder number two. Gets right on the boulder. Always very quick to get on the boulders. I feel like she is very intentional with how she reads things. Mm -hmm. And I feel like she pays attention to what her plan Like she comes out and she knows what her plan is immediately. We'll see other athletes take a second and kind of um, rework what they're going to do. A little slip up, slip up there, but she definitely can fix it. Now, this is an interesting beta, going with that toe hook on the left side versus the right side. Yeah, uh, sort of a nicely through. Yeah, good, that great cross example hold. Yeah. of how great her hand strength is. That exactly. was not the cleanest we've seen that move done, but of no matter to Yanya. Just needs to keep it together here. Go high enough. Hold that swing. And just a slow press over. Nice lock off into that top hold. Nicely done by Yanya Garnbred. Good stuff. So she's going to sit behind Natalia and Brooke based solely on tiny mistakes establishing on the first two boulders, on the start holds. And what a great That's save a there great by save. Yanya. I mean... She was already planning on bringing that left hand up, but that foot slip was pretty jarring. And to be able to hold it is just a testament to her hand strength, and especially in these conditions in the hot, hot sun. Yes. And here, just really smoothly pushing through. Top. So this is two boulders down, two boulders to go. We are in the dead middle. If you're just joining us, you're a bit late. <laughs> but you're watching the finals here, the women's finals in Salt Lake City. The men's final went down a little bit early this evening, and we were right in the middle of the women's round. Natalia Grossman, Brooke Rabatou, not much in it but one attempt. Nyanya also equal with them but four attempts. So two tops each and two zones for the top three. Then we have Orian Berton, Stasha Geyo, and Miho Nanaka sitting on the bottom third, the bottom half, the last three of this final round. So two boulders to go. And just like that, We're we are coming through. close to, we're halfway through the women. When we, we like to watch climbing and it feels, it's always exciting to see things go through. And uh, when climbers are flashing boulders, they move through them very quickly. And so the likes of Natalia and, and Brooke and Yanya taking less than a minute and a half 
means that you know, we're shaving quite a lot of time off of the movement through this round. And I am excited to see boulders three and four. I am too. They're, they're very different boulders. And I think that's one thing the root setters always do a great job of. There's so much diversity week to week in competitions. Um, from last week's competition here in Salt Lake, we're seeing very different styles here this weekend. And from boulder to boulder, round to round, it's been so cool to see how they're testing these athletes. And the goal of these competitions is to be as well-rounded as possible so you can handle what the root setters throw at you. And they've been throwing everything in the book. And it's just so cool to see how the root setting is such a science and they're so good at their jobs. And just shout out to the root setters. Yeah. I mean, they're killing it in these last two weekends and generally on the circuit, it's really impressive. Yeah. 100%. I am pro root setter. I've been pro root setter for a number of years. Uh, they are an integral part of the competition because they're building the boulders on which the competition happens. And it is not root setters against climbers. It is not root setters you know, hoping and praying that climbers fall off. It's root setters creating an environment in which to showcase the talent of these finalists, generate some separation through some slips, falls, create some risk create some uncertainty. Um, a great expression from a friend of mine is that they put all the athletes in a boat and push them out into the water and what happens in the water is up to the climbers and that is the X factor, is what the climbers are gonna do on any given day. So if you think because climbers are flashing boulders, it's because the routes are too easy, that's not a thing. No. Nope. I assure you the boulders are very difficult. If Miho Nanaka is not topping a boulder, it's the boulder hard. is hard. So. What you have is a couple of climbers who are having absolutely standout starts to their season, and then Yanya, who is an absolute standout performer. So climbers pulling down boulders, and the root setters have done an absolutely phenomenal job all weekend long. Natalia nicely establishing on this number three boulder for the women. You saw as she kind of climbed up into that last orange taped hold, establishing all four points on and coming into this stem position. Now she's gonna have to rock across here and kind of hold on as tight as she can and really use her hip flexibility here to get into that top hold. It is a good hold that they're finishing on, but this is a precarious. Yeah, it's super insecure. <laughs> one, two, one fingers. two fingers. Wow. Very impressive. Another flash from Natalia Grossman. Absolutely reading that boulder to perfection. And I mean, an interesting take, I, it was supposed to be more of a dynamic movement to the finish. I mean, not necessarily the only way, but maybe a more secure way to kind of stand up into it. But she she kind of just let herself use a little bit of her reach and hip flexibility and just trusting those feet. You can't do that without trusting the feet there. And really nice execution it's there. It's a great foothold, No, it's, it's really bad. It's bad. <laughs> it's really bad. <laughs> It slopes away, it slopes down. It's dual, it's a slippery texture on the other side. All those holes are dual textured with friction side, slippery side. So it was a risky move, but it, it paid off. And it's again, it's your comfort level, right? Whatever you're more comfortable with, you can make things happen. Well, just in case you thought the boulder was easy, uh, Stasha, <laughs> who was an excellent rock climber, slips there, just creating the opposition between those two holds. They're fairly far away from each other. And you do have to push quite hard. And we mentioned earlier, uh, and again in the men's round, when you have to apply a lot of pressure, you run the risk of slipping out. So there is a, there's some things we're gonna say that sound counterintuitive. Sometimes <laughs> you can not push hard enough. Sometimes you can push too hard. Uh, it's gonna sound like we're uh, disagreeing with ourselves, but every <laughs> boulder presents its own set of circumstances that they need to adapt to. And that's the beauty of climbing. It really is, and Stasha Gayo figuring out that lower section this time. Now just going to have to figure out how she can get to that top hold in a secure manner. Already looking like she's not so psyched on that right foot. Go ooh, into the more dynamic way, but didn't bring that left hand with her. If she had, she might have been able to save it better. But a good, an easy fix. She has plenty of time. Yep. And what you're getting is the, the hold point it out when we get back up there but the hold the second last hold at, they need to move from left to right and the farther they go from left to right the worse that hold gets so it's great when you're far to the left of it because you can lean back on it imagine you lean back on a door frame 
and then as you move across it, it just gets progressively worse and worse and worse to the point in which it's no longer providing any help, and that's the transition where you need to now trust the right foot, which we've said is not very good, and then move into the finish hold. So all the opponent, how you made it look academic, <laughs> there is complexity in the way that this boulder finishes, and see what Stasha can do. Two minutes is on definitely enough time to go up and make those adjustments. She's taking a good amount of time to think about it, a good brush, and just a deep breath or two to get re-centered. And that's another thing about climbing in general. It's sometimes hard to tell when things are hard because when you do things well, they look easy even though you're trying hard. And that's something that can't always translate to the viewer. But it's good to note that just because things look easy, they're very difficult. Yes. So this is what we're talking about. She needs to transition. She's just staying way to the left because that's where the opposition is. And then there's a point of almost no help. But that is excellent work from Sasha. Really nicely done by Sasha Gayo. Going with that static uh, option mm -hmm. as well. As long as you can trust your feet, it definitely works. Really nice adjustment there for her. <laughs> Looks yeah. like she forgot something, but able to get it from the judge. Really great execution. And nice to see another top for Stasha Gayo. Mm -hmm. As we mentioned, she is coming back off of some time off. So she's just finding her rhythm again. And she's spent a lot of time kicking around semifinals and finals on the World Cup circuit. So she is in a familiar spot. It's just been a minute since she's been there. Brooke Rabatou comes out. The crowd wakes up again. <laughs> so after two tops looking for three. Taking Deep a second breath. to center herself before getting on this boulder. She knows it's been flashed already. Per Natalia getting back to that isolation zone in a matter of seconds. Ooh, nice save great there. Great save. By Brooke Rabatou. Got to get into this first section of the boulder. Nice oh. step. And again with the knee palm. Three in a row. Yeah. <laughs> She's a bit low on the left foot, but I think she can probably, yeah, Maneuver she can get out of it. Maneuver her way through that. Again, really confident on her feet, which we've seen from a lot of the women here tonight and throughout this weekend and the last weekend. Mm -hmm. It's a skill that clearly everybody's practicing. See if she's going to go with that more static method. It might be harder for her to get into a static position. Oh. Almost able to save. It just falls out of it at the last second. We saw Natalia and Stasha kind of reach to it a bit more. And Brooke being a little shorter, she's not going to likely be able to get her fingers on the hold before she starts mm -hmm. to fall into that shoulder. But what she just did is definitely something that she can make work. She just kind of fell out of it at the end. And honestly, considering how that boulder started with her having to do a quick save, to be able to have that composure in order to even <laughs> continue to attempt and then adjust on the fly again later was really impressive. So she should be able to clean it up a bit on this attempt. I agree. <laughs> I said a lot of words yeah, was there. That, I kind of went on a roll for a second. Spot on all the way through. <laughs> Rick Rabatou, um, it, there is an interesting layer in a round where boulders are getting flashed is that when you don't flash a boulder you put yourself behind even though you get a top so there is pressure now in number of attempts to tops and Brooke is really 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 going to want to get this one. Oh she is able to reach over there just. nicely just barely every inch of her reach nicely done by Brooke Rabatil very happy with that finish the crowd is excited to see another top in the women's final. Yes. <laughs> a little bit of a contrast to the men's final. Not as many tops, but more tops in the women's, but fight for both all the way yeah. through. Nice smile there from Brooke Rabatou as she finishes women's number three. And an interesting ride for the crowd here, and, and especially when you get a crowd where you don't necessarily have a thousand seasoned finals viewers, is that they're going to think that the women's final is maybe more exciting <laughs> because people are grabbing the tops of boulders, whereas the men's final was a nail-biter because yeah. one top would flip-flop the entire leaderboard. So from us, from our perspective, we're here to tell you that just because you're not topping boulders doesn't mean the round isn't spicy. So they're giving us completely different experiences, and I kind of love it. 
Yeah, the separation has just been so good throughout the entire weekend, right? Like, even though, like you just said, the boulders weren't being topped as much, those men were separated very well in that final. Mm -hmm. And you're seeing it here with the women as Ooh. well. Ooh. A little more of a dynamic <laughs> approach. As you might uh, as come you to might expect from guessed. Oriane. Yeah. <laughs> this is uh, in her style is to try and do something springy and dynamic. And uh, I think she got close enough that she might try that again. And that method definitely could work. She just needs to have a little bit more power on her next attempt. But we'll see if she decides to repeat that movement or go with something else. She's going with it again. Yeah. Oh. oh. No, she wound it up and then but slowed it down. <laughs> exactly. Just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> Not predictable. <laughs> no, that's... Uh, making predictions is dangerous. We try really hard, but we uh, get foiled by climbers doing unexpected things fairly often. Orian, you're making this transition. Nicely wow, done. Really nicely done. That just the, the two-finger save is becoming a hallmark of this boulder. Quick work from Oriane Berton. Yeah, really nice climbing there from her. And puts her in a much better position having two tops now. That was a great adjustment. And she definitely tricked us by winding up a bit, making us think she might try to go um, with more of a coordination dynamic approach where she actually ended up adjusting to a dynamic than static mm -hmm. press approach. Mm -hmm. But We're going to get a really good look at... She moved very quickly to match that. <laughs> Well, if you think about it too, right, the more you get into that right shoulder on that hold, the, the more secure you're going to be. Mm -hmm. Hang there with just the two fingers for too long, you might end up in the wrong yeah. spot. Miho just taking a second to figure out which boulder. What boulder am I standing under next. right now? It is a little different as the women's number three is right next to women's number four. So it's easy to get confused. It, yeah, <laughs> and you're, uh, you're coming, you're running out, you're staring into the sunshine. Right. Really right, shoulder nice. strength. Execution there again with the leg press. She needs to get that right foot up and she'll be in a nice secure position. Lots of stemming yeah. in this day of climbing. Yeah, lots of careful movement, uh, precise footwork. The root centers have chosen to test precision and careful movement. You see Miho here now just along the bottom of your screen, the scoreboard, three zones from her. Just needs to kind of teeter over here. Oh, almost able to save it. Looked like her feet were starting to slip a little mm -hmm. bit, so she wasn't able to be in as good of a position as she needed to to get some real purchase on that finish hold. It is wild how much sunnier it is this weekend than last weekend. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we were literally shivering last weekend, and now everybody is just blazing in the sun. But... It's the same for everyone, so they're all dealing with the same conditions. Yeah, outdoor comps add that layer of weather. <laughs> yeah. uh, of course, the wall is shaded. If it rained, it, was, uh, you know, it wasn't going to be affected. And in fact, it did rain last weekend. Uh, it added just a little bit of humidity to the situation. But there's been a breeze for the most part. Uh, and you know, climbing outside is a regular occurrence on the World Cup circuit. There's lots of venues that have outdoor. And some of them are really hot. There's a couple yeah. of places that turn into greenhouses. <laughs> uh, so this is a, a, a really nice venue. They've done really a great is. job here in Salt Lake City to host back-to-back -back events. Oh, yeah. And Miho working her way back towards this top. I would expect the adjustment to be correct. Try to go more dynamic than the previous time. Kind of moving that shoulder around. She did have a shoulder injury a few seasons ago mm. that I believe is healed up but you know older injuries can you know you can yeah. feel them again occasionally but S specific movements can yeah. wake up old kind movement of injuries yeah notice it a bit more than if you never had <laughs> yeah. any kind of injury there but really efficient here at the bottom it it just looks like she either needs to commit to going more static mm -hmm. to that finish hold or just really go for it and actually go full dynamic bring those two hands over and not fiddle with that left hand on that lower half moon volume. Yeah, just be a little bit more. Oh, and just maybe uh, she's just holding that right shoulder quite a bit. Just needs to be a little bit more. 
precise, a little bit more definitive in her movement at the end of this boulder. And she just looks just momentarily unsure. She, go ahead, sorry. No, no. <laughs> I was going to say, she is also putting a lot of pressure on that very first move on her shoulder. She's really slamming her right hand into it. Let's see if she can make it happen. Going a little more static. Nicely done well by done. Miho Nanaka. She'd be very happy to have a top there. Absolutely. Just showing that there's a mental resilience no matter how good you are or how many competitions you've been in where you have to get back up off the mat, give it one more try. And even if you think that you might not even be in a podium position anymore, you want to show everybody watching that you've got it in you to dig down deep every time you need to. So it's when you're having a tough round, it's hard, but Miho showing absolutely why she's been around this sport and been successful for so many years is because she does have that gear to exactly. go and find. Exactly, and tough rounds are part of the game, right? You, it's easy to you know, succeed when your rounds are going so well, but it's you, you learn more, you learn this resilience and that extra try-hard ability from those rounds that break you down a bit more. So it's a good, good life skill to have if you want to stay around on this circuit the way she has. Yeah. And even for you, you know, in, in the gym at home when you're getting frustrated by a boulder and you want to walk away and maybe you just want to try it next time, go back and give it one more shot. You know, put a little bit of uh, that try hard that Miho just showed us and see it, how much that'll improve your climbing. Honey. <laughs> just a little finger flex to make sure that everything is in optimal position. Get a little more wind to the fingers before she sets up for this last move. Reading this boulder nicely going into it <laughs> very dynamically. I was hoping she would do that. Now, she definitely had the top. It's funny when people slip after they've established yeah. on the top, it then makes it seem as though they didn't, but she definitely had the top. I, I, I wouldn't argue with that. No, me neither. I mean, likely someone will still appeal because that's what happens, but mm -hmm. if I were calling this, she was in control. She just slipped afterwards. This, this catch is remarkable. Insane, insane. This, is, this shouldn't happen. <laughs> really great from mm -hmm. Yanya. She There's does that and she looks and then after that she slips. Yeah, that's a 100% top, <laughs> but a, a great save. Unexpected to come swinging around like that, but not unexpected for it to be a save from Yanya. <laughs> so a lot weighing on boulder number for Natalia Grossman still sitting at the top of the leaderboard. Brooke Rabatou uh, right behind and then tied right now is Yanya Garnbrett for that third position. So this is spicy. It's very spicy and this last boulder that the women are gonna get on is pretty powerful. Um, they're gonna kinda start on the start holds and then work their way into the arete, go through some slopey volumes. Then there's a dynamic jump into a pretty good flat hold and then followed by this palm press. Mm -hmm. And then the end shouldn't be too difficult, but it's a slow kind of lock off and you're going to have to hold a bit of a barn door at the top, which I mean, they've proven that they're very good at. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the women have been showing us that. No problem. Natalia Grossman, boulder number four. We are into the last boulder of the finals here in Salt Lake City. I'm watching Natalia Grossman uh, basically announcing her <laughs> arrival on the women's circuit. This is where that dynamic movement's going to come up. Looks like she's going for it. Oh, not doing the palm press. She's actually going to go straight into the zone, looking for a perfect round here. If she's able to top, nobody will be able to catch her, and she'll be solidifying a, another gold medal World wow. Cup win. She thought she was dreaming last weekend. Can't wait to see what she says this weekend. I mean, we talked about this earlier. Unless you come out and flash every boulder in the final and end up in first place, there's always something to complain about. But nothing here for Natalia Grossman. I'm going to try really hard not to cry. And uh, so is she. <laughs> Natalia Grossman is absolutely in her element. This is an excellent show of climbing on boulder number four. You are climbing against the best climber of our generation in Yanya Garnbrett 
and you know that this needs to be a flash in order to maintain the top of the leaderboard. And she just came out and, made and it flexed happen. all <laughs> over this boulder. She really did. And you could see just even right there, her face is scrunched up in joy. The, the buzz, there is a feeling now in this building. And I, I cannot <laughs> help but think that Yanya is going to be kicking herself for those two minor slips getting established on the starboards, things that she normally wouldn't have to worry about. At the end of the wow. day, though, it will be a really good learning experience for her because you can never be too careful. And going into this Olympic year, I mean, she, Yanya, another qualified Olympic athlete, has to be thinking about everything and being so specific about every portion of her climbing. So mm -hmm. to have this happen here, it'll be something to learn from for her and only make her stronger. Yeah. Sasha Gayo trying to figure out how to get into this zone hold. She really needs to come in first. She's kind of too stretched out. Not impossible. I mean, <laughs> this, this kind is of be a adjusting nice, yeah. right now. That was a really good Climbing decision backwards. there. Climbing backwards. Oh, and she's, she's chosen not Sasha. to reverse it. There you go. Now she's going to need to figure out if she wants to just go double to that zone or go into the palm press. She was long enough to keep the toe, which honestly is more of a trap because even if you do releasing, if she was able to get in a palm press and one hand on that zone hold, releasing that would be quite a crazy swing. So it's going to be better if she can get out of that toe mm -hmm. hook before she even before she gets, gets there. to the zone. Yeah. It's uh, a boulder. Sometimes can trap you into a oh, sequence yeah. <laughs> or into an area where you think you've done the right thing. Not necessarily. We saw that on the, the fourth uh, semifinal boulder was like that too. It sent quite a lot of the climbers into the uh, being handcuffed, and yeah. hands backwards. So <laughs> here we saw Stasha get handcuffed uh, with her feet, really, the, you know, sort of an entire body handcuff. And we'll see if she can make the adjustment on the way up instead of having to reverse movement as she gets into the middle of the boulder. decide to use the bad part of the hold sometimes and that's root setters often ask you to do the thing you don't want to do uh, but have to do instead of do the thing you want to do which is to grab the good parts of her exactly Ooh, oh, wow. so powerful really nice sequencing there from Sasha Gale really really good work it's important to use every part of your skill set to your advantage and she sized that up and was like I think I can do that move mm -hmm. by gastoning that zone hold. I am long enough to make that happen. And that's great decision making there. Still had to fight for it and was able to make it happen. See if she can get her two hands on the top. She doesn't need to grab that screw on. It's just more secure. So she's going to go that safer route and make sure she gets to that screw on. And what a way to end the round for Sasha Gayo. Great entree back into the circuit yes. after dealing with so much with that injury having to miss out on World Championships, the Toulouse combined event, and then missing the Olympics by one spot in Moscow. So to end this round with the top, it's great climbing there. Yeah, she's uh, definitely still in the mix in the women's circuit. And it's interesting you see the different approach to the last move where you saw Natalia get perched all the way in the zone hold and basically be established and just need to make that fingertip match and Stasha there having to climb into the finish hold. And we have Brooke Rabatou, who is uh, climbing as well as anybody could have expected. She's having a really great round here tonight. A little slip ups here and there in terms of attempts, but she's been quite efficient all around. Two attempts on boulders one and three to get a top and flashing women's number two. She'll be looking to get a flash here, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Again, having sequenced this earlier, the women can get on the boulders a lot quicker than they do in the earlier rounds. They kind of already have a game plan, so they just need to execute and hope that how they read it from the ground is the way that it's actually supposed to be climbed. But right now, looking really comfortable and kind of cruising through. Ooh, just falls out of that toe hook really quick. Mm -hmm. And you're, you're toe hooking on the side of the wall which is flat and has no texture. So it's not that that's, it's not a bad idea, it's just insecure and it doesn't take much to, to pop out the little bit of friction that you're getting off the shoe rubber. 
Just uh, asking a lot of your foot when you're making a, a drop down move like that. And uh, they're big, slopey holes. Like, this is a big compression, a powerful move, but still always smiling. For <laughs> yeah, she definitely has fun out there. And she's always had a really good outlook when it comes to climbing. It's all about how she feels on the boulders, not really about the placement. So I think that just sets you up to really climb to your potential when you're not so focused on how you end up ranking, but more so about how you're climbing on each boulder, trying to figure out how she's going to approach this dynamic movement. The determination. Oh, so close. Yeah, dialed in. Yeah, she, she was just really saw that on her face, staring right? Staring down that hold. She was in the right position. She just needed to get that left hand a little bit higher, but climbed through that earlier sequence sequence much better. Mm -hmm. Really great adjustments from her first attempt to her second. Plenty of time to keep moving through this boulder problem. There are implications here for the silver medal. Yeah, she really needs to definitely get control of the zone. And a quick replay of her going for that. You saw that her left hand was so close to hitting the lip, but she was just a little short. She's going to add a little power to this attempt in order to make sure she gets set up better to get both hands on that zone hold and continue on throughout the boulder. Again, just really determination here on her face. Not getting, as you said, just it needs to be a little higher, a little more vertical out of that jump. Same amount of right to left, and just a little bit more up. And, uh, a minute and change to go. Brooke just needs to find a bit of composure here. She definitely has the capability. We know that she can do a boulder like this. Maybe it's just a small adjustment in footwork. Is it a small adjustment in where that left hand is sitting or the right hand is sitting? Only she knows for sure. And this would be a surprising adjustment to make because she's pretty close. But if she does go into that palm press with the left hand, it, it might suit her better. Not sure she sequenced it that way. Oh, looks like she's going to slide off there. Maybe running out of gas. This is a burly boulder. That compression eh. move is going to take something out of you. So Brooke Rabitou. Even the start is pretty burly, trying to get into that arete. 30 seconds to go. Really needs to get a zone here to stay in the hunt. Going to go for a heel hook quickly, deciding that's not the way. See if she can get a little more power. Oof. Just looking for something. Oh, wow. wow. We'll get the zone. Does she have enough time to top? She really needs to move quickly. Oh my gosh, this is so exciting. Sorry, everyone, I'm freaking out. Oh, wow. <laughs> that Brooke. was a crazy movement. Just wow, great fight from Brooke Rabatou. The amount of strength to hold that, we call that an iron cross, to so hold that stretched out position. Just and watch here. Look at how stretched out she specifically is being not super long when it that comes to her arm length, really fighting, just not enough time to make it happen, mm -hmm. but keeping it really exciting. Yeah, that was a, a remarkable show of grit from yes. Brooke Rabatou on boulder number four. And you cannot turn off the switch when you are in a final with Yanya. You just, no. you can't. <laughs> you can't take your foot off the gas. You need to fight for every single inch, and she absolutely did there, and uh, kept it interesting for sure. Oriane Breton now. I think this boulder will suit her well. Honestly, maybe better than the other ones in this round. Um, I feel like she has a lot of power in these positions, and she's clearly no problem being dynamic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, she's a springy climber. So I could see her getting a flash here. Uh, immediately looking quite comfortable here. You see that a lot of bend in that left arm, allowing her to wind up Ooh. that move. Ooh. In the right position, just a little low on the zone. If she can, on her next attempt, grab it higher on the hold itself and then also pull into it more with her shoulders and her biceps. That'll put her in a better position to hold that swing. But as I expected, really nice climbing through that mm -hmm. bottom section, not really struggling that much and reading it really well. Really well. So a quick look at the leaderboard here. You see Natalia Grossman on top. And Brooke Rabatou, Yanya yet to climb. Stasha there in fourth. And Oriane and with uh, the ability to move into fourth with the top of this boulder, I believe. And then Miho with two zones on the first two and a top on boulder three also yet to climb. 
The crowd is giving Oriana boost. They want to see people on top of boulders. <laughs> and the climbers definitely appreciate it. It's been, uh, it's been a while since we've had a thousand people <laughs> shouting at climbers. Seriously, and she's so comfortable in knee bars. It's really fun to watch her style of climbing. Man, something Very, that will only get better. Yeah, and it's um, it's a mix between body movements and dynamic movements, and just there we quick go, right there. Making. Very quick decision making, adjusted just as we thought she would, and just trying to figure out how exactly she wants to go to the finish of this women's number four, taking that same approach as, approach as Natalia Grossman, and going to end with the top, Oriane Berton. Very, very good climbing. Yes. Not going to get her on the podium, but fourth place, I mean, three finals in a row this season on the podium last weekend on the podium in Myringen in second place. So off to a wonderful six. I'm going to say it again. 16 years old. You see a, a huge hug there. She knows that Natalia has wrapped this comp up and they are absolutely happy for each other. Uh, something we talked about before that men are also happy for each other they're just less expressive <laughs> of it um, you see them definitely high-fiving each other and congratulating each other pats on the back good performances all around uh, and the women just tend to be more quick expressive. to express very expressive and it again we've talked about this a lot it's just so great to see in this sport it's such a competitive sport the athletes are so strong uh, wow that saved by Miho <laughs> Nanaka that was very good, very good uh, reaction to yeah. what was happening. We know she has great reactions considering her speed performance this yes. weekend. Uh, and I wonder if we're seeing a little bit of the speed. There. Wow. More of the intended beta there, perfectly executed. Yeah, see how high she got on the zone hold. No doubt she was going to stay on through that swing. And she's just going to very calmly press her way into the pinch. And a very nice way for Miho Nanaka to end the round. Only not, pride in it, yeah, but not, pride is a big deal. And not the round she wanted, but she, again, I think is a climber who really thinks more about how she's climbing versus necessarily the ranking. She has another goal in mind this summer, the Olympics, and all of this is still training. So when you can get into a final and fight in the final, I think you're always in a good position. Absolutely, and having podiumed, in speed this is just showing that she can fight uh in multiple disciplines and that is a big confidence boost Huge. going into the combine and into the olympics and we're down to it yanya gonbrett the last climber in the round uh unexpectedly for her uh gold medal is off the table but a silver medal is on the table and just wait and see what Yanya can do here. I'm interested to see specifically what her approach is to that dynamic move in the middle. It also looks like she kind of forgot about that arete there for a second, but a nice quick fix right there. But I could see, I, I almost could see her doing more of what Miho just did mm -hmm. with that palm press, but perhaps she'll just jump right to the zone hold, but we'll have to see, we're about to see. Straight to the zone yeah. hold, perfectly executed. Gonna take a second and compose herself. Yeah, in control. You are gonna see Yanya Gombret oh. looking great on this Very last nicely boulder. Very done. I, I just love how smooth her movements are. It's every time she does something, the rest of her body reacts so quickly, and that is just something that cannot be learned easily. She that that is so specific to her climbing style, and it's so cool to see. We're absolutely privileged to have been able to watch her climb. Uh, and just because she's not in a gold pedal position because you expected her to be because she's done it so many times, uh, Natalia Grossman needed to bring the best performance she had. Just have a, a look at, look at really the extension you see from Yanya to get up to finish this boulder in absolute style. This is a, a good look at the power she has in store. Look at that left hand, just controlling the movement. Um, Natalia Grossman is the story of the weekend. When you are climbing in a final with Yanya Garnbrett, you have 
to have to approach every boulder as a flash in order to give yourself even a hope of competing with her and she absolutely did that today maximum respect to natalia grossman maximum respect to yanya brooke rabbitu orian Barton, stasha Geo, and miho nanaka you were treated to a wonderful wonderful final on the women's side so here's a look at our leaderboard. Brooke Rabbitu in third. Presentation here. From Slovenia, your silver medalist, Janja Garnbrett. Once again, second comp in a row. Look at that smile. Natalia Grossman, the roof, if there was one, would be coming off. Natalia Grossman winning back to back in Salt Lake City. Great look the excitement in the crowd here. They cannot stop smiling. This is a real wonderful, wonderful arrival performance. Showing the American program is doing some things right to make these podium appearances very consistently across the start of the season. And wonderful to see the emotion here between teammates Brooke and Natalia, so excited for each other. First and third here in Salt Lake City. And you see a few of the volunteers, obviously they're people they know from the community. Orian, so excited for them as well, just off the podium this time. But a bright career ahead. I have no doubt about that. So we'll just see, we wanna get Natalia over for a quick interview. She's more focused on basking in the joy with her friends after that performance. So one last look at the perfect final from Natalia Grossman. Four tops in four attempts. Yanya Garnbrett absolutely right on her heels. Nothing in it but a couple of attempts on boulders one and two from Yanya. Boulders that she would then go on to complete uh, in quick fashion. Brooke Rabatou just missing a top on boulder number three. Orian Berton with three tops having trouble on boulder number two along with Stasha also having trouble on boulder number two. And then Miho Nanaka who uh, put in a wonderful performance on speed on Friday. Fought her way into a final and then climbed very, very well indeed to uh, come out in sixth place with two tops. Let's hear from Natalia now. She chats with Megan. Natalia, three podiums in a row, two gold medals in a row. You were calm, cool, and collected the whole time. How did you handle the pressure out there? Honestly, going first, I think, just like allowed me to have fun and have no pressure the whole time. And yeah. <laughs> Well, it definitely looked like you were having fun out there the whole time. When you were approaching that last boulder, did you feel like you were going to be able to flash it, or did you have a little bit of hesitation going into it? Um, I tried to be just as confident as possible, but it was like the problem that I thought was going to be the hardest because it had like a little jump, which is not always my forte. So, yeah. <laughs> Would you say that having won last weekend gave you a bit more confidence going into this weekend? Yeah, I think I had a little more confidence this time, but after semis I was feeling pretty wrecked, so I didn't really know what to expect in finals. And now, last weekend you said winning the World Cup was a dream come true. What would you call this weekend? Oh, um, I don't know. Like, It doesn't feel real. It's a dream times two, I guess. Well, I can assure you it's real, and you are a two-time back-to-back weekend gold medal World Cup bouldering champion, and 
huge congratulations, and I can't wait to see you on the rest of the circuit. Thank you. <laughs> Wonderful to see Natalia Grossman um, standing in, on the big screen in front of this home crowd and showing the, the composure that you need to develop if you're going to keep winning comps, you're going to keep getting interviewed right afterwards, and that is something to look forward to. So, uh, Peyton, attention to the young American climbers. They have arrived. We are just waiting to get the podium set up here. We'll do the presentation of the medals. A reminder that our next event is going to be in Innsbruck, the 23rd to the 26th of June, and that's going to be Boulder and Lead, an interesting combination, especially for the combined athletes heading into the Tokyo Olympics. America 1-3, and Nanya Garnbrecht sneaking in for that second place. It's funny to see Yanya sneaking into a second place position. Uh, well deserved, but very, very close. So, and now, we'll, if you did not watch the men earlier this afternoon, it was a, a hard fought battle, a lot less tops, but a lot of good climbing. Sean Bailey with his first gold medal over Kokoro Fuji in second place one top in three zones and then Tomoa Narasaki with two zones and a top to take in third place. Yoshiyugi Ogata, Zach Gala and Maximilian Milne rounding out the men's field in what was a completely different but equally entertaining final round a little bit earlier this afternoon in Salt Lake City. You can go back and watch that uh, on the YouTube channel. They will be up in replay as will the women's final. You can go back and watch the semi-final as well. Uh, really, really good climbing in those rounds in order to get 20 climbers down to six. And that's what it takes to win a World Cup. You've got to fight your way through, in this case, 60 climbers. Get the job done. Stand yourself on a podium. So wonderful to see Sean Bailey as well. The American program producing some really, really, really good climbing this weekend. Just waiting for Megan to come back and see what uh, she thought about talking to Natalia right on the heels of this victory. I hope you enjoyed the coverage this weekend. We're going to have a look at our podiums here. I believe what we're doing here, this is all the Olympic qualified athletes who are here this weekend. So we brought them all out. This is the showcase. These are the athletes that are going to be climbing in the Olympics, the combined athletes, Boulder, lead and speed it's really exciting too to have a chance to see all these athletes and for them to have a crowd of people that they know and are, or may, they might not know everybody but at least there's coaches fellow teammates like things that you're not going to get in tokyo because it's likely that there won't be an audience and definitely or not and it's still we like there might not be an international audience so this might be the only time to have some familiar faces in the crowd for these athletes that have achieved so much by being able to compete in the Olympics. Yeah. You're right, a great moment for them in front of this crowd. Twenty-one of them, I think, are here this weekend, and that's the number. That's a, a significant grouping. Barely over half, but half. <laughs> Because at the Olympics, there will be 20 men and 20 women, totaling out 40 athletes total. Really difficult to get into that top 20 in each gender. It was a grueling year, and then some postponement of some of those um, invitations to the Olympics. And then we, were, we had a couple of them here who went home, so we've had, uh, you know, Anna Mondra went home, as did Shauna Coxie. They were here uh, on the first weekend and unable to compete this weekend. <laughs> Mika Mawem yeah. on the left of your screen is always a big character. Oh, yeah. Really nice look out across the venue that we had on hand. So thankful for so many people to come out and support these athletes that have worked so hard and have been waiting to compete in front of a crowd again. Mm -hmm. Just so nice that that could happen here. And two great exciting weekends <laughs> Mikhail just you know throwing a few flips in for everybody to be more entertained by as if finals were not entertaining enough exactly. let's just throw in a few 
flips. Just a nice pack on Miho's shoulder, and hopefully that's just preventative. And she was favoring it a little bit over the last couple of boulders. They were uh, super, super shoulder intensive, but she was able to top the last boulder. So nothing too serious, I think. Uh, Megan, the emotion coming off of Natalia there was evident. Yeah, as she topped that boulder, it was like an automatic moment of, oh my gosh, I can't believe that this just happened again. And also, it's not even just standing on top of the podium again, but to have a perfect day of climbing. You don't get that in competitions that often in general, let alone a World Cup. And then after winning gold the weekend before, it's just so much All that is just together. so rare. And I'm glad we didn't say anything about the perfect round before it happens. <laughs> That's a jinx that I want no responsibility for. I am with you on that one. We're just uh, giving it a minute here to get to the podiums. Uh, the presentation of the flowers we do right away, just to give them uh, a moment back in front of the crowd. And then we bring the podiums out and give us a little bit of time to go and get the medals and uh, some actually really nice if you if you didn't watch uh, the finals last weekend the trophies that they've got here in Salt Lake are uh, they're really a nice touch uh, you often see interesting local the the host country tends to make their own trophies so it often has a local flavor and the Salt Lake City ones are no exception we will get a good look at that in just a few minutes and if you're looking at the top of the wall, the way kind of the mountain ranges, the trophies kind of reflect that even, which is pretty cool to see. If you're not familiar with Salt Lake City, if you're watching from, you know, uh, parts abroad, Salt Lake City is a, a really interesting spot uh, because it sits in a bowl that's surrounded by hills and mountains. There's great skiing here. There's great climbing. Uh, just 20 minutes out of town. So a really good spot to USA Climbing move their headquarters to their new training center is here this is the where the, the hub of usa climbing is and the difference in having all of the athletes training closer together more regularly you start to see maybe a little bit of the difference in the european model where the geography is less of a factor mm -hmm. for national yep. teams to train together more regularly and do not discount the ability to climb with other World Cup level athletes on a regular basis. Something that uh, Sean McCall said last weekend is that in your basement when you're training or in your home gym, uh, if you're the best climber there, <laughs> you might try a move and think, well, nah, that's impossible. And there's no one beside you to step up and say, no, it's not. Watch, I'll do it. And then force you to dig deep and find another gear. So that friendly, consistent competition is super, super important. Yeah, you are blessed if you live in a place where there are a lot of strong climbers that can push you because the only way to get stronger is to climb with people better than you. And like you just said, that is a great example of that self-doubt that because maybe you haven't seen somebody else do it, it doesn't mean that it's not possible. But the minute you see somebody else, you switch into gear of, oh, okay. And even if you don't see someone... Uh, do the mover if they're far far ahead of you in terms of level you can also just watch the way they do it with ease and then you can be like well if they did it that easily i should at least be able to do the move you know fighting a bit harder in some instance <laughs> and you also need to consider that you have to set your own motor problems and when you're here in uh when you're surrounded by world-class root setters as a lot of national programs will have national level root setters around setting world cup style boulders that's going to layer in as well. So there's lots that go into creating world-class athletes, and the American program has uh, suddenly done that. And just wanted to give a nod. We talked about the root setting a lot. Jamie Cassidy was the chief, first time chiefing back-to-back -back <laughs> boulder comps. Um, a huge undertaking. A huge undertaking. And if you know anything about root setting, you know that it is such a grueling process. They not only get on the boulders, but they have to put the boulders up, move those volumes. Some of them weigh so much. And so to take that on two weekends in a row as the chief is so impressive. And the creativity involved, you walk up to a blank wall and a pile of holds on the ground and you need to create uh, the, the stage on which the climbers are gonna perform across two weekends, across three rounds each weekend. Um, we're looking at in the neighborhood of 60 boulders getting put up. So uh, Jamie, different, slightly different crew each weekend, but our route setting crew here uh, did an absolutely phenomenal job this weekend. Yep, they absolutely crushed it both weekends and it was cool to see
just the diversity of the boulders, different styles, really testing that well-roundedness from each athlete. And really, really cool to see just how this sport is progressing. It's just the level gets higher every year. And I don't see any sign of it slowing down. No, I agree with you that the the climbers keep getting better, so the root setters keep getting better to test the climbers, and the climbers do what they're supposed to do, and we're in this wonderful loop of uh, an arc going upwards, and their root setters are finding ways to bring out the best and put on shows like we just got today. And um, the, I, I'm not gonna point to men's boulder number four, the slam dunk final move. <laughs> yeah. uh, they often can set showier boulders in the final if they've created separation in the semifinal where they know there's no ties in account back then they will sometimes set slightly showier and what we got there on boulder number four was uh an absolutely exciting swing and women's boulder number four as well you got to have a hop dino i mean i we could break them all back down for you and and you would be uh, treated to uh, a class in oh, yeah. root setting this weekend totally and to talk more about boulder number four for the men it was just such creativity kind of a combination of some moves we've seen before in other competitions but to put it all together in one boulder was pretty incredible and just so exciting to watch and usually the more showy the boulder like that in a final the more people top it so it was cool to see that it was just pretty difficult on top of being kind of showy yeah exactly we're just uh we having a moment waiting to get we got to bring all the athletes we got to collect them all back up again back there <laughs> um, they got to you know they're all, they're busy chatting there's climbing is we haven't evolved to the point where we're allowed to keep people segregated from each other so there's a lot of friends congratulating friends uh, Which immediately is following love it just makes it a little longer to get people onto the podium but don't worry our, our MC Al is just dancing for everybody to keep them excited and around to see this amazing podium of women that fought hard in every round this weekend 100% I said I encourage you to go back and watch the men's final if you did not see it I encourage you to go back and have a look through the semi-final just to see how hard these athletes had to work to climb tonight front of this crowd and to put on the show that you were treated to this evening. It was actually pretty funny too because Natalia right after our interview she she was like after semis I couldn't even lift my arms because <laughs> I said I was like you're happy you fought really hard during that semifinal round huh and that was her response was I couldn't even lift my arms afterwards but hey that didn't stop her from doing every boulder and flashing every boulder. <laughs> exactly and that uh, it goes to show you that it doesn't matter where you are when you step out in the final, whether you're sixth, fifth, fourth, third, second, first, <laughs> you just, I was gonna only do a couple, but I, I thought I've come this numbers. far, I've come this far, I'm gonna do all the numbers. It doesn't matter where you come out from behind the wall, if you top all the boulders, uh, you've uh, increased your odds greatly of taking home a gold medal. Though it's definitely comforting to come out in a higher spot, sometimes I think it's nice to come out first, right? Nobody's gotten on the boulders. Everything you do, you're gonna get a cheer from the crowd. It almost takes some of the pressure off to like perform a bit better. So I always think that that's like an interesting aspect of just that whole reverse running order. You kind of have more ground to make up in the sense of how you qualified, even though it doesn't carry over, but like internally you feel like you have more opportunity to show everybody that you can be better in this round and you can kind of put it all out there a yeah. little, like with more ease. There's less pressure as if you're waiting behind hearing someone flash, flash, top of boulder. The pressure just builds and builds and builds and builds. So there's something to be said about coming out first. Yeah, I agree with you. And the, and the crowd is excited to see newness. Yeah. So sometimes <laughs> when you come out uh, sixth as the top qualifier and someone's topped a couple boulders, the crowd's like, yeah, I've seen it. <laughs> what do you got for me lately? Now I've seen this boulder get top. <laughs> so they will, they pretty much always cheer for you, but you sometimes turn around and go, wait a minute, um, how come people aren't super, super excited for me? And it's a well, but we've seen this done before, and that sometimes happens. So you're right. The order of events has a little bit of a factor, and it is a lot of what you make of it. So what is your own internal process? How do you approach finals? How do you approach the job that needs to be done? And uh, if you're Natalia Grossman, uh, last weekend and this weekend, 
the job that needs to be done is stomp all over boulders. Exactly. So impressive how efficient she was and how composed she was. It's funny, too, because I remember um, doing an interview with her not too long ago, and she kind of mentioned this competition back in 2018 where Alex Puccio had to top, I believe, the final boulder and veil to win. And she talks a lot, Natalia, about the composure she saw in Alex in that moment. And she, she'd referenced it a few times and how she, it really inspired her to get her mental game more together. And so it's really cool to see how that has kind of played out in these last two weekends. That is an excellent little piece of information. <laughs> and that's, if you're a young climber, pay attention at all times. We're gonna do our men's podium first. Everybody where they're supposed to be. In third place, your bronze medal, Tomoa Narasaki, who I believe is standing on the wrong podium, but it's okay. <laughs> it's of no, never mind. There's a good look at that trophy in the mountain range here in Salt Lake City. And well, Perhaps we should switch those just little placemats in front. And your silver medalist, also from Japan, Kokoro Fuji. Also showed a lot of composure through the final half of the final round. And the boulders got really so hard. So much composure. Both weekends in a row, really mm -hmm. great adjustments that he made. And then your winner, gold medal from the USA, Sean Bailey who absolutely <laughs> put down a clutch performance on boulder number four to secure himself this gold medal that he is very, very happily putting around his neck. It's always so nice when you can see years of hard work come together in a moment like this and exciting to see Sean on the very top of this podium in front of a home crowd. Mm -hmm. Drink it all in. Take your moment in the sun. As the sun is finally setting. <laughs> Take like, your moment oh, out of the sun. We're on the podium, and yeah. now the sun has gone away. <laughs> yeah. These are the temperatures in which you'd want to be climbing those last couple <laughs> boulders, for sure. Just, <laughs> it's just that awkward moment where you're not sure if you should leave yet. And so that's when the girls usually do some sort of pose or yeah. pick each other up with the better. Yeah. Kind of like, okay, did you get enough photos of me? I'm ready to go down. Can I move <laughs> along now, please and thank you. Oh. And we'll bring the women finalists out. Just waiting for the women to start moving out here. I think we were able to wrangle all of them. It's always, like Pete said earlier, a little tricky to get everybody in the right spot. <laughs> looks, like looks like we've got them. 
We found them. By we, not, not the <laughs> not, two of us. No. <laughs> we didn't do anything. We didn't do anything. <laughs> The award once again will be presented by Bruce Mitchell, President of the USA Climbing, Barbara Scalaris, President of the International Federation of Sport Climbing, and Aaron Mendenhall, Mayor of Salt Lake City. First, our proud fellows, representing the United States of America, let's hear it for Brooke. And Rabbit here is your bronze medalist from USA, Brooke Rabbitou. Two bronzes in a row last weekend here in Salt Lake as well. Really great climbing from her all weekend. Lots of fight to the very end. Mm -hmm. I love to see it. Thanks to our silver medalist, representing Slovenia. And your silver medalist from Slovenia, Janja Garnbret. Phenomenal athlete on another podium with another medal. We often see her in that number one spot, but great climbing from her today. Great progression yeah, towards the beginning of this circuit as she prepares for the Olympics. Yeah, exactly. She has, uh, you know, finding the balance with the other All disciplines. All of the disciplines, yeah. And your gold medal is two weekends in a row from the USA, Natalia Grossman. She said it was a dream come true times two. <laughs> Looking to create more consistency in this World Cup circuit as she has been on three podiums in a row and showing no signs of slowing down. And now the national anthem of the United States of America. podium gold medalist Natalia Grossman two back-to-back -back World Cups where she's walking away with the win Yanya Garnbrett in silver Brooke Rabatou in third both Yanya and Brooke will be at the Olympics this summer so much exciting climbing tonight from the women and the men and we will be back in June in Innsbruck Austria for our next World Cup stop bouldering and lead make sure you check back in uh, in about a month's time i had an absolutely wonderful time this weekend and last weekend uh mega martin thank you for sitting here with me through all these rounds and applying your knowledge from your experience competing in climbing for so long i really appreciate your knowledge and the, what you brought this weekend and last it was my absolute pleasure pete hope we get to do it again sometime and i hope you all continue to tune in to these broadcasts make sure you're checking those apps for updates on how all the athletes are doing and please come back and see us again yeah uh thank you for hanging out with us we absolutely enjoyed bringing bouldering and speed climbing into your living room hopefully gaining a little bit of an extra appreciation i'm pete woods Thanks for hanging out with us. That's going to do it for the IFSC World Cups back-to-back -back in Salt Lake City. Have a wonderful evening.